old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist we're, we're, we're did fail her. Yeah, we're absolutely. supposed to have was moved another on from that. Era. She was 22. Mm. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. On TV, on radio, and on your smartphone, this is Talk TV. Good morning and welcome to the show. I'm Julia hartley Brewer, and you are with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online and on your smart speaker. And I'm with you live from 10 until 1. Coming up in this hour, four major picture agencies have pulled the first official photograph of the Princess of Wales since her surgery in January. Amid concerns, the picture was manipulated. Kensington Palace has not yet responded to the claims. And three former Conservative Home Secretaries have warned Michael Gove against using extremism to score political points before he announces his new anti-extremism plan this week. And new laws to cut migration and tackle visa abuses come into force today, which include restricting care workers from bringing family members from overseas. We're also going to be talking about the breaking news in the last few moments due to be announced, we think about half an hour, by Reform UK that Tory MP is currently sitting as an independent given his remarks about Sadiq Khan and being in control by Islamists is about to defect to Reform UK. We'll be talking about that up next. First though, let's get the latest news headlines with Elliot Gottkin. Good morning. Kensington Palace is facing questions over whether a newly released photograph of the Princess of Wales and her three children has been doctored. Four leading photo agencies have decided to retract the image that was released on Mother's Day over concerns it has been manipulated. The Associated Press said it removed it over an inconsistency in alignment of Princess Charlotte's left hand. Kensington Palace has declined to comment. Royal biographer Norman Baker told Talk Today it would be wrong for them to stay silent. Well, you've got to come clean. The best strategy in this situation is to come clean and say, yes, it was done by whoever did it. Uh, they may say it wasn't done with their knowledge, for example, but to actually admit it's happened because it's clearly has happened. And uh, silence just breeds further questions. So they need to admit this in the butt as best they can and probably apologise to the press for releasing this photograph. At least 50 people have been injured after an incident on an inbound flight at Auckland International Airport. It's reported the LATAM Airlines flight from Sydney suffered a technical problem causing a strong movement. One person is said to be in a serious condition. 13 were taken to hospital. The mother of murdered teenager Brianna Jai has met with a family of one of her killers. Esther Jai says she had a positive and respectful meeting with a mother and uncle of Scarlett Jenkinson, who was behind a plot to kill her daughter. The 16-year-old was stabbed 28 times with a hunting knife in Cheshire last year, but her mum believes it was important to speak with her killer's family. Um, for me, it was important to understand like, how they were as a family, and it was important for me to also understand like what, what, what has she been going through, because... Um, like, I suppose that from, from the beginning, I understand how the crime that's been committed has is, is impacted so many other people. And a man and a woman have been arrested and 34 bodies removed from a funeral director's property in Hull. The 46 and 23-year-olds were detained following concerns over how the deceased were being cared for and stored at the Legacy Independent Funeral Directors. A special hotline has been set up for concerned families. A 39-year-old man will today become the first person to be convicted of sending an explicit photograph without permission, known as cyber flashing. Nicholas Hawkes sent images to a woman and a 15-year-old girl. The maximum sentence is two years. The government is trying to clamp down on a range of online abuse, trolling and predatory behaviour as part of its Online Safety Act. And Oppenheimer has swept the board at this year's Oscars, winning seven awards. The film took all the top prizes, including Best Actor, Best Director and Best Picture. While presenting the biggest award of the night, Godfather star Al Pacino jumped the gun by announcing the winner before listing the nominees. Killian Murphy, who won Best Actor, paid tribute to the director, Christopher Nolan. 
It's very, very special. You know, I, I, it's, we've been working together for 20 years. I think he's the perfect director. He's an extraordinary writer. He, he's an extraordinary producer. He's extraordinary visually, extraordinary director of actors. He presents his film like no one else does in, in the world. Uh, and I just can't believe my luck. You know, I did a screen test for him when I was a kid, and I thought that would be it. Must go around to seeing that. That's the latest. Now time for a look at today's weather with Nazanin Gaffer. Times Radio sponsors Talk TV Weather. Hello. Overall, it's looking quite cloudy out there for this afternoon, so a dull start to the week. Once any early mist and fog clears, we still remain with largely cloudy skies across many parts of England, Wales, eastern Scotland and over Northern Ireland. There's also rain across Northern Ireland edging into western Scotland later and under the cloudier skies, especially across eastern areas of the UK, the cloud may be thick enough for some drizzle in places too. A bit of brightness, so for Wales and the southwest, where we'll see the highest temperatures up to around 13 degrees Celsius, but only in the high single figures further east. Now, overnight, we see more rain edging in across Ireland and Northern Ireland with some heavy downpours, brisk winds developing there as well. The rain across Scotland heads up towards Shetland and Orkney. Everywhere else, mostly dry with some clear spells, a bit chilly across parts of the northeast, fairly mild elsewhere. Then through tomorrow, that rain continues its journey further eastwards across Scotland, England and Wales. Still some heavy downpours likely and another batch of wet weather also spreading towards Ireland and Northern Ireland before the end of the day. So pretty much everywhere we'll see rain on and off throughout the day, although Northern Scotland doesn't look too bad, mostly fine and bright there. Times Radio sponsors Talk TV Weather. Good morning. Welcome back to the show. I'm Julia Hartley Brewer and you are with Talk TV. Well, as is often the case, and that's what I love about working in the news world, you can have a planned show, you know what you're going to talk about. And then, you know, Kensington Palace apparently manipulate a photograph of Kate Middleton. Oh, and then something else happens. Reform UK at 10.30 this, uh, this morning are due to hold a press conference with, they say, major news. Well, that news has been scooped by a national newspaper who say they believe that the announcement will be that Lee Anderson, former deputy chairman of the Conservative Party, currently sitting as an independent after being suspended by Tory whips for comments that he made about Sadiq Khan, is about to defect to Reform UK. Well, this comes after a difficult few months uh, for the Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak. Indeed, after a difficult week, after, frankly, the most sort of yawn fest of a budget last week from his Chancellor, Jeremy Hunt. Talk in the papers at the weekend of yet more plotting uh, going on behind the scenes among uh, some Tories. Well, if that news is correct, and we believe it to be, what does that mean? Well, joining me to run through all the biggest stories of the day is commentator Sam Armstrong, who has close links with a number of Conservative MPs, many of whom have been accused of plotting against the Prime Minister, have they not, Sam? But also Talk TV's chief political commentator, Peter Carble. Uh, good morning to you both, gentlemen. Peter, um, I'll come to you first on this. Um, uh, I mean, it does look very like there were lots of hints about mm. this, uh, lots of talk. We know that there was that meeting in, in what looked like a, a sort of Alan Partridge-style <laughs> motel um, uh, a, a, a couple of days after um, the suspension of Lee Anderson, yeah. uh, about, with, between Richard Tyson, the reformed UK leader, and Lee Anderson after he was suspended. It, it does appear that yeah. he is about to, in the next 20 minutes, to defect to Reform UK. How significant is this? I think it is significant. It's certainly something that Number 10 is concerned about and they will not be happy about the fact that this has happened. But some in the Conservative Party will be breathing a sigh of relief because Lee Anderson has gone from a huge asset to the Conservative Party, someone who could really speak to, quote-unquote, real people in the Red Wall, to someone who is a real liability for Rishi Sunak. He was made Vice Chairman of the Conservative Party, only lasted less than a year in that role before the row over Sadiq Khan. And then he is now... Well, no, he no, he lost the job as deputy ch uh, chairman of the party. Oh, sorry, no, he resigned, earlier, that's right. He, he resigned, resigned so that's he right. And then he was suspended. Apologies, yes, he re resigned 
over the uh, Rwanda asylum plan and then, of course, was suspended, lost the whip over that. Apologies for that mistake. Um, yes, it is It is fascinating. It's a, a really interesting political journey for him as well because he was a member of the National Union of Mine Workers. He campaigned for Michael Foote in 1983. He was a Labour councillor. Then he became a Conservative, so now 30p Lee is now three-party Lee <laughs> if he's become a member of Reform UK. We'll find out in a few minutes. Well, here's the thing. I mean, is it, first of all, the first question really... Um, uh, to, to, to you, Sam, is is he a loss to the Conservative Party and how much of a gain is he to the Reform UK? Well, unspeakably, un undoubtedly, he is a complete loss to the Conservative Party. Look, Lee Anderson is the living, breathing embodiment of the Red Wall. Yeah. You think of who that voter is, you think of who the Tory party have got that is closest to that kind of voter, and it's Lee Anderson. It is a totemic loss for the Conservative Party because increasingly there is just this overwhelming feeling that actually, and I might disagree a bit here with, with Peter, that the Conservative Party is choosing deliberately, consciously, to walk away from that coalition of voters, former Labour voters, much like Lee, that chose to trust it in 2019 and gave it that majority. And I don't think it's any... Shock. I don't think it's any surprise. I don't think it's any coincidence that Lee is disappearing at the same time as the Tory party has gone from polling over 40% yeah. to now polling and, under 20 And this is the thing. This idea that Rishi Sunak is having to choose with Dan in the doldrums and the polls, having to choose between sort of the left and right of his party. It's, uh, there was some hope when he made some announcements on net zero and some of the things he said about, you know, trans women, or, you know, or, aren't women. And, like, and you think, oh, he's, he gets it, he gets it. But then the lack of action on all of these things, the decision to suspend Lee Anderson because of the reaction to what he said um, about uh, Rishi's, about um, Sadiq Khan. Look, I didn't, I didn't like his wording, and he's admitted his wording was clumsy. But again, we played it again and again on the show because I thought it was so relevant. Everyone basically was saying it was, it was Islamophobic for him to criticise Sadiq Khan. It's not Islamophobic to criticise someone who happens to be Muslim. He also made the same comments about um, Islamists are, are, are in control of Sadiq Khan, London, and Keir Starmer. But everyone in the media decided to cut off the Labour and the Keir Starmer because it didn't fit the narrative, which is a white Tory criticising a Labour Muslim man. And that's what it became. And instead of standing up on that, what a surprise, the Tories caged because, oh, oh, someone at a dinner party has read The Guardian and is unhappy with you. Even down to things like, and he's been criticised for things like, you know, being 30p Lee, as, you, as mm -hmm. you said, Peter Cardwell, because he made the comment that you could actually make food. People say, oh, people can't afford to eat. You can make a meal for 30 pence. And everyone I know who's had a you know, you know, hard start in life has mm -hmm. gone, Yes, well, you can. I mean, mm -hmm. inflation, it may have gone up a bit more, but you can. You can make basics uh, much more cheap than, say, getting a takeaway and the like. Yeah. And, and it, is, it is extraordinary how he does. I think he, what most of the things he says, I think most people in this country, and certainly Red Wall voters, are going, well, yeah, that's obvious. And yet the Tories are sort of, ugh, the Notting Hill set. You know what I mean? They're just horrified by it, Sam. Yeah, and the decision to kick Lee out was a classic example of that. There were lots of people on Twitter with their blue ticks, oh, lots yeah. of followers. It's senior lobby commentators. Uh, no disrespect to our lobby commentators. <laughs> I, I wouldn't call myself oh, no, senior. No. Uh, you can absolutely disrespect him. He gets paid extra. Wouldn't call myself senior. <laughs> but they were kicking off. They were upset, so the Prime Minister felt, ooh, ooh, I have to act, I have to do something. No, no he backbone. He threw him out, and this was the inevitable consequence. And he's we, going to lose And we know more. not only those Tory WhatsApp groups, Tory MP WhatsApp groups, saying that they were inundated with messages from their members saying, we were really happy with what he's... Lee Anderson said. Well, even Conservative Houghton, the sort of Bible of the Conservative Party online, did polling that showed that about two, two out of three Conservative voters, who people who responded to their uh, survey on their website, wanted Lee Anderson to stay in the yeah. Conservative Party. Well, OK, look, Lee Anderson was a Tory MP. He's sitting as an independent. We understand, you know, very soon he's going to be announced he's a Reform UK. That would be Reform UK's first MP. Now, we've seen this before with parties that, bearing in mind, Nigel Farage, although now a broadcaster, is the honorary president of the party. In fact, leaves own owns the company that is, weirdly, Reform UK. It's a very strange setup there. Uh, it's led by Richard Tice. Um, but, you know, the, the, the you know, various incarnations of the UKIP, Brexit Party, now the Reform UK, they're sort of seen as, you know, a running in a, in a stream together, um, is that, you know, we, we, had, we had the defection where we had a UKIP MP, mm -hmm. but we did not see that translating into more yeah. people being elected. Brexit Party stood down a load of candidates in 2019. Did not see that. You know, we've seen European elections with PR... Um, very, very different. When you proportional representation, they could do better. When it comes to first past the post, incredibly hard for a small party to get itself elected. Is this, do you think, 
the first Reform UK defection? Do you think this could be the first and only Reform UK MP, Peter? What, well, there's no doubt that guess? Lee Anderson has a strong personal vote. He's also a bit of a cause celebre in terms of the fact that he has said what he has said, and he is uh, a very, you know, he genuinely believes what he says. He speaks human to many yeah. people, and there will be a lot of people in his constituency of Ashfield who say maybe this is the man who could be uh, a Reform UK MP after the next election. It's very frustrating. I speak to people inside Reform uh, UK every now and again, and certainly they're, you know, around 13, 14 percent in some polls. But as you say, the way the system is at the moment that doesn't translate into 13 or 14 percent of the MPs. Yeah. We've had defections before with uh, UKIP, for example, Douglas Carswell was one of those, um, but also we're in a situation where it's just very difficult to break through, and I think reform will struggle, and I think Lee Anderson might struggle, but he does have a big personal vote. Um, coming back to you, um, uh, Sam, do, I mean, <laughs> do you think there's an element where lots of people will, other MPs who are sitting in seats which they would have thought until the last few by-elections well, I'm probably OK. I've got a majority of 20,000. I'm OK. And now they've been seeing those seats fall. Now, we know that by-elections are different from general elections, but the polls seem to be only going in one direction right now. Um, and they're sitting there going, maybe my best or indeed only chance of survival will be defecting to Reform UK. Would you expect further MPs to follow? Well, I have had this morning texts to that effect from... And just kind of for people who don't know, you, know, you work closely with... Uh, was it there's the new, I, I, the new uh, Conservatives? Th that's correct. But I, I'm yeah. not saying that we're from that group in particular, no. but there are undoubtedly Tory MPs that are sitting on some of the biggest majorities in the country that are this morning so shocked by this news that they are fearful that they will hold, as I say, this isn't the red wall, this is the bluest of blue wall seats that they are worried that they might not uh, now hold and are considering and are countenancing how do they respond. They've got options, of course. One option for Tory MPs might be to join Lee and defect. Another, and I would not rule this out this week, is for them, if they've been sitting on the fence, to submit a letter to Graham Brady, chairman of the 1922 committee, and seek a new Conservative leader. If Rishi Sunak continues on this path, there simply won't be any Conservative MPs. There's a very good question for uh, Rishi Sunak. Within the last few days, we've seen one of the most one nation -y pretty liberal MPs and Theresa May, former Prime Minister, saying she's standing down. One of the most committed uh, people to her constituent parliamentarian. You can criticise her about all sorts of things, but she was a very good constituency MP. She's standing down, as are dozens of other MPs, because they see the writing on the wall. But that That's often happens after it, a long it, period it, it, in it government. It does, but nonetheless, we're seeing people on the yeah. One Nation left of the part of the Conservative Party. Now we're seeing someone on the right of the Conservative Party, Lee Anderson, leaving. Look, there are individual circumstances for all of that, but nonetheless, the narrative is, and if you look at the recent, most recent YouGov poll, Labour are 27 points ahead. The writing is on the wall for Rishi Sunak. It's it's going to be absolutely fascinating to watch what happens in the coming hours and days. We'll bring you any news to you as it happens. I'd love to hear your reaction. Do get in touch with us, that reaction to uh, the news. We're expecting it in the next 15 minutes or so that Lee Anderson, now sitting as an independent but conservative MP for Ashfield, former deputy chairman of the party, that he has, uh, well, is about to announce his defection to Reform UK. It's going to be announced by Richard Tice, we understand, the leader of that party, in just a few minutes' time at a Westminster press conference. So we'll keep you posted on all of that. As I said, I'd love to hear your reaction. Do get in touch with us. You can get in touch on the phone, so 344-499-1000. You can text on 8722, or you can get in touch on X at Talk TV as well. Calls are charged at the national rate, uh, and text costs one standard network rate message. Now, I want to talk about something else. I'm... Uh, I'm genuinely not that interested in royal stories, as you both probably know. Apart Jack. from this one. this one. But my God, I love a good story. Well, it's a, a strong news story as opposed to sort of PR puff. Well, this was an attempt at PR puff, wasn't it? I'm sure we got the photograph um, of uh, Kate Middleton, the Duchess, sorry, Duchess the, the Princess of Wales, with her three gorgeous children, looking very well. First photograph of her that has been published in in a very, very, very long time indeed. Um, since uh, mid-January, when we, uh, it was announced that she was going into hospital to have abdominal surgery. Now, quite rightly, we haven't been given every cough and spit about what happened to her, and I think we shouldn't. People should be entitled to the privacy uh, of uh, any, that anyone should have. However, it was a decision by the palace on Mother's Day yesterday to release this photograph. They not just put it out on Instagram and the like, they also uh, gave it, obviously, to major picture agencies as well. That would have been in better quality for them. Now, four major international agencies, including the likes of AP um, and um, Getty and um, uh, the, the, uh, the Reuters as well, put out what they
they called a kill notice last night on this photograph to halt the distribution of the photograph on the basis that they believe it has been, in their words, manipulated. Sam Armstrong, um, this is, I mean, this is an extraordinary situation. Photograph put out by the palace, Kensington Palace, taken, we are told, again, everyone takes it, taken, we are told by Prince William. Normally it's Kate taking the family photos, you know, she's a keen for amateur photographer. This is put out, lovely message, basically supposed to quell a lot of rumours about Kate. So let's, I'm not going to go into the details, but there are rumours about her health, physical, mental, rumours about their marriage, goodness knows what else. No, I've, I've got no interest in, in silly internet rumours on these things. But the idea was to reassure people, she's fine, happy Mother's Day, everybody. And it has blown up spectacularly in their face, hasn't it? This is rapidly becoming the biggest Annus Horribilis in the royal family's uh, past since 1992 with the original one. Look, you have several members now, <laughs> several members of the royal family incapacitated either by scandal or by illness. You have uh, PR blunder after PR blunder and, of course, our ever-present friends in California uh, spitting in from the sidelines whenever they possibly can. This was just the latest unnecessary, unforced error that's really going to lead the royal family in a place yeah. that it needn't be. But, but my, my guess is this has been done by you know, Palace Flunkies who's done it very badly. Peter Carwell, I mean, look, if, if a politician, if Rishi Sunak did this, Keir Starmer did this, everyone will be all over this. Now, people obviously are very wary because, you know, we are talking about a woman who has gone through obviously mm. some very serious surgery, the fact that she is out... Uh, uh, not, not she's been out of action for, I mean, it's 76 days since you had the last public photograph of a woman who's one of the most photographed women yes, in the world yes. um, and, uh, and is normally, you know, on the front page of every newspaper and we're not expected to see her before Easter, we're told. Um, but the, the, number of, the number of issues, and I, oh, I was being absolutely monstered by royal fans online when I said, I said, you know, I said to the palace, I think it was a pretty bad idea to put out a photograph of the of the Princess of Wales and her children, given all the rumours about her, um, without her wearing her wedding ring or engagement ring. And lots of people saying to me, she often doesn't wear her engagement ring. No, but I've never seen a photograph of her without her wedding ring. Scuba diving, playing sport, whatever. Both women wear their wedding ring every single day. You might take it off to wash up. You might take it off if you're having surgery, I think you're required when you have surgery, but I'm sorry, she's quite clearly, as you can see in this picture, not wearing a wedding. Now, that's her choice, but probably a strange PR move. Mm. But the, um, the Telegraph certainly hasn't. They've noted, they've noted about seven issues. I've, I've noted more than that. So the no wedding ring. Everyone's questioning this tree that's in, apparently in full bloom, but was taken, the photograph's taken a week ago. Maybe, not, maybe not an issue. There's a big issue with Charlotte's sleeve and her wrist. There's an issue with her boot heel. Some question marks over Louis's fingers, which look rather strange. Um, Louis, the pattern on Louis's jumper that's uneven at one point. Um, there's an issue with Charlotte's skirt. There's an issue with the zip on Kate's jacket. And if you look up closely, not a line. It's clearly been Photoshopped. And um, there's also a step behind, a little white step just behind uh, on the left-hand side, which is not aligned as well. Is this just a really bad Photoshop by some palace flunky? Or, I mean, the conspiracy theories have gone wild online. Does this suggest that all is not well? It certainly is a very bad Photoshop, but it's also a very bad series of PR errors by Kensington Palace. I mean, we had William pulling out of his godfather's uh, funeral, uh, saying it's a personal matter. We still haven't heard really what that is, although there's plenty of speculation about it. And now this. And I think that all you needed, really straightforwardly, to put all the internet rumours to bed were just, were just a very straightforward. We're told it's a sort of nice family snap. Well, it's not. It's been manipulated. It's been doctored. But why is the question? Yeah. You know, none of the things, apart from, I think that's a very legitimate question, about the rings, but everything else is sort of, well, well why? Why would you manipulate that? Why would you change that? And the, the I mean, reasoning some, behind yeah. it has to I be I mean, questioned. some people are saying it's just... It's, I mean, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I, 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 it's nearly always a very obvious explanation, which is usually incompetence. I think uh, a cock-up theory is nearly always the right one, isn't it, Sam? I mean, you work in politics, you know that is the case too. Um, but, you know, did they take a bunch of photos and in one of them, two of the kids isn't smiling, one of them, you know, and it's just, all right, well, let's just Photoshop in the nicest smiles from the kids so everyone looks happy for that nice photo. But I'm thinking, you know, you're royal kids. You must know the deal. I mean, everyone's got kids. You're like, right. You know, it's it's grandma's birthday. Everyone put a smile on for the same photo. Surely, surely this is not beyond the wit of man. Yeah, I remember my first week, my first big campaign in politics. I there was somebody holding an annoying poster in the background of a of a picture of my candidate, and I decided Photoshop it out. And somebody more senior on the campaign turned around to me right. and just said, "Never 
ever, ever Photoshop anything in politics because you will get caught, it always happens, and it will be a disaster and a scandal and people will be demanding to know why. Yeah. And it was probably the most anodyne thing in, in the first place but... and you tried to edit it. But the moment you do that, you've lost your credibility. Nobody is going to trust you anymore. That's it's a shame that the palace haven't been taught that same lesson. It's a very, very big trust issue. Well, I want to hear your reaction to this. Get in touch about Lee Anderson, because that is the breaking news, obviously, since we have come on air. Uh, but also, I'm asking you about Kensington Palace refusing to comment after a manipulated official photograph of the Princess of Wales was pulled by the world's biggest picture agencies. Indeed, uh, Press Association have just joined with that. Uh, they're the ones using that word, manipulated. What is your reaction to all of that? Give us a call, 0344. Four four double nine one thousand. Text on eight seven treble two, or get in touch on X at Talk TV. Uh, great to hear from you on that, and I know uh, I want to hear from you on Lee Anderson as well. Now, while I've still got you, 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 you both here, um, can we talk about town halls and uh, woke? Woke sprees, they're still spending, Sam, huge sums of money, 50 million quid in the last three years. It's doubled, I think, every year since um, 2020. Um, on, on diversity and equity and inclusion officers, at the same time as some of them, like Birmingham, going bust, effectively, because they haven't got enough money. But they don't have enough money to empty the bins weekly. But they've got enough money for, for a, a focus group on, or in a seminar on diversity. Taxes have never been higher in this country Services have never, many people are saying, are worse. They're waiting for everything. It's dreadful. This is 14 years into a Conservative government and you've got taxes through the roof, services are, are, are abysmal and the wokeification of councils. Increasingly, yeah. it feels like whoever you vote for, the same cabal of metropolitan left-wing activists are going to run direct this country according to their ends and their interests. Indeed. Um, let's go back to the breaking news about Lee Anderson, though, because I know Peter Caldwell, uh, our chief political commentator, you're still with us. Um, you, you've just got some reaction from number 10 to yeah. the news. Not official yet. No. It's been leaked in advance of this press conference starting in five minutes' time. Number 10, I understand, knew about this a little while ago this morning, but a very senior source in number 10 has said it's not great, but also not exactly a shock. That is the reaction. Well, that's of interesting. That they're, 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 it was clearly writing on the wall. Yeah. Yeah, they're, yeah. Well, look, one of the other big stories I wanted to talk about today, again, before various breaking news, was about extremism. Um, Michael Gove, uh, the uh, uh, Housing and Leveling Up Secretary, uh, he's uh, going to be announcing later this week a new definition of extremism. <sighs> it's all about British values. Rather uncomfortable about this, a bit worried that I might come into that definition. My views on net zero, trans ideology, lockdowns. I mean, they've already sent my information to a counterterrorism unit in the United States uh, for, for, for lying about me, which, which I've been uh, had a formal apology. Um, given, given where we are with these protests that we're seeing, the pro-Palestinian protests, a man who arrested for holding up a Hamas a terrorist sign uh, on Saturday, extraordinary, even after he was attacked. We're going to talk to the man who actually filmed that later in the show. Um, extraordinary times. Um, three former Home Secretaries and other anti-extremist uh, campaigners have, 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 have written to, the, to Michael Gove to say, we're very worried about how you're going to define extremism. You mustn't politicise it. What is the concern there? Well, it's extremely difficult to identify those Islamists who we see on the streets each week shouting things like from the river to the sea, which we know, everybody knows, is a call to remove the Jews from the only place that Jews can call their own country in this world from those that are, you know, good, ordinary people that will have no truck with that. But, the, but the they're moment... on a march organised by what are, most of the organisers are or have links with Hamas. Correct. What point worth making? How do you identify those that fall the right side of that line, the wrong side of the line, when you're not prepared to use the law to criminalise what these people are doing? I don't think it should be beyond the wit of men, but I, I, I confess I share your extreme worries that... Let's say Michael Gove is doing this with the best of intentions. I'm sure he is. But any standard yeah. he sets, a future Labour government could well decide that all three of us here are extremists. Yeah. Well, exactly. And we've already had this with hate speech, haven't we, Peter Cardwell? Yes. The definition of what is hate. Oh, OK, so me saying, for instance, you know, a, a trans woman is a man, that is regarded as hate speech. I believe that could, under the laws they're trying to bring in in Scotland, that could have me in prison. I mean, people like J.K. Rowling, and I'm with her all the way, have said, then I'll go to prison, but I ain't going to lie. Um, but we are into this territory. When you talk about British values, mm. British values are surely should be rested on freedom of speech. If you're threatening somebody, if you're physically harming, if you're you know you're, you're calling for someone to be hurt, then that is a crime. But does it need to have a label? Yeah, a lot of people I'm speaking to are worried about this kind of idea of sort of undermining liberal democracy. What does that actually mean? And also, the definition of extreme extremism probably needs to be looked at again. 
but at the same time, that what Michael Gove is, appears to be proposing, and we'll get the full details on Thursday, a lot of uncomfortable people in Westminster yeah. about this, on all sides of the political spectrum, actually. Absolutely. We haven't even got to the Oscars, but remarkably unwoke. Well done, everybody. It's about new diversity rules. Well, we'll talk about that a bit later in the show. Uh, now, I want to come back to your messages. Uh, Kensington Palace have refused to comment uh, after a manipulated official photograph of the Princess of Wales was pulled by the world's biggest picture agencies. What is your reaction? You can call 0344 499 text 87222. We'll get in touch on X. Rachel has done that and says, leave them alone. All photos are edited before release. I'm not doing anything. They have chosen to put that photograph out. And the world's leading picture agent has said, no, there are too many, too many things that are wrong with this photo. We don't trust this photo. That's not people attacking the royals. That's people, that's people defending truth. Those are different things. Alan says, I couldn't care less. Fair enough, I understand. Penny says, I think there is more to Kate and William's story than has not been told. Uh, and I wanted to get to a call. Oh, we've just, we had a caller on, Lee Anderson. If you want to get in touch on, I think, rather more significant story, I think we'll all agree, Lee Anderson, the now, now currently independent but former deputy chairman of the Conservative Party, is in the next couple of moments due to re defect to Reform UK. That is the breaking news this morning on the political front. Do get in touch. Your reaction to that? Is that good news for Reform UK? Is it good news for the Tories? Bad news for the Tories? I'd love to know what you think. All I care about is good news for voters. I don't know about you. Uh, anyway, coming up after the break, three former Conservative Home Secretaries have warned Michael Gove against using extremism to score political points. That's before he announced his new anti-extremism plan this week. We're going to talk to Tobias Elwood, no doubt get his reaction to the Lee Anderson news as well. I'm Julia Hartley-Brewer and you're with Talk TV. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaking. Now, you ain't going to have an eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. All Rosie. right, Oi, oi, treat go. When JK Rowling says, let's just be honest, it's all she's saying, let's just be honest. When a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman, trans woman. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Plymouth City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite Yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. Now, you might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram, as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, <listen. laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth plinth. Mr Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I, know it's, I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. That's quite a small statue, then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, <laughs> a trans... Sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So <laughs> yeah. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist what, did fail to, her. Yeah, it was another era. She was 22. Mm. We we're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place uh, where you get the truth.
Welcome back to the show. I'm Julia hartley Brew, and you are with Talk TV. Right now, just some breaking news, just in case you've just tuned in. Richard Tice, the leader of Reform UK, is holding, hosting a press conference where he is due in the next couple of moments uh, to announce that Lee Anderson, previously late, sorry, t well, previously a Labour councillor actually many years ago, because he was a Conservative MP, now sitting as an independent former deputy chairman of the Conservative Party, is to defect to Reform UK. This after being suspended uh, from the party. We'll bring you uh, any more developments on that in the next couple of moments. Careful, I'm looking down to find out. Also, an interesting development on the royal story uh, about the manipulated photograph of uh, Kate Middleton of the Princess of Wales with her three children, issued by Kensington Palace for Mother's Day, pulled by pretty much every major news and picture agency for being manipulated. And I, we spotted like, more than seven issues where clearly there has been some sort of photoshopping. Agencies were not happy with it. They have pulled uh, the image. Uh, but um, just some breaking news, and Sam... Uh, uh, his Armstrong is with me. He's uh, he's a commentator, and you've just uh, noticed this news. Uh, what, what Kate has had to say about this? Yes, that's right. Kensington Palace have just put out a tweet that uh, from Catherine. It's signed by her name. It says, "Like many amateur photographers, I do occasionally experiment with editing. I wanted to express my apologies for any confusion the family photograph we shared yesterday caused. I hope everyone celebrating had a very happy Mother's Day, Catherine." So yeah. she says she edited it herself. No palace yes. flunkies involved. I tell you what a lot of people might have thought was given that it was about 10 a.m., so 10 p.m. last night when this photograph was, was pulled and questions had been raised all day, to wait until 10.35 on the Monday um, sounds to me like there's been a crisis meeting and a lot of negotiation. Um, I've been around this world for long enough. That may well be the case, but the fact that that information was not put out by the palace last night... I think is very strange indeed. Shows a level of, there's either something going on or a level of abject incompetence by everyone at the palace. Neither of which is good. Yes, that's right. Well, you, you, I, I will say this. It would have been very easy indeed for Catherine to throw um, a junior official under the bus for mm -hmm. any mistake. She hasn't done that. She's taken personal responsibility for editing that photo. Oh. It's not exactly the crime of the century. Oh, no, 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 but it's the fact that they've left this hanging. Well, I'd love to hear your reaction to that. Do get in touch. Um, uh, also, of course, the uh, news that say about Reform UK. Well, we're going to put all of this to my next guest. And we're also going to talk to you about extremism because three former Conservative Home Secretaries have warned Michael Gove, he's the Housing and Levelling Up Secretary, against using extremism to score political points. That's before he is due to announce his new anti-extremism plan this week. Well, I'm joined now by former Defence Minister Tobias Elwood, who's a Conservative MP. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, good morning to you. Thanks for, thanks for that. Um, I mean, I say, Conservative MP, just checking, you're not planning to uh, uh, go defect over to Reform UK, worried about your seat, are you? <laughs> no, not at all. I mean, I, I understand why you want to uh, uh, focus on that, but uh, it's no... Surprised that Lee Anderson has made this journey. You touched on the fact that he started in the Labour Party. Uh, the Conservative Party has won elections again and again and again in our history, not over the decades, but over the centuries, because we've been a centre-right party that appeals to the electorate as a whole. Any party, Labour or Conservative, that moves to the extreme, moves to the fringe, then removes themselves from getting elected. Labour proved this with Jeremy Corbyn. So I think the fact that Lee Anderson was feeling uh, perhaps uh, not part of the fault uh, and feels more at home with the Reform Party, I think uh, both the Reform Party will be pleased. I think quietly the Conservative Party will be pleased uh, as well. It has been a huge distraction over the last uh, number of weeks. Well, yeah, it certainly has been a lot of focus on it. I think you talk about this, like Reform UK is the fringe. I think a lot of Conservative voters would say Lee Anderson represents... Tory values. He's not the fringe at all. He's, he's saying what a lot of them are thinking. And actually, the sort of the pandering to the woke ideologies, failure to take action, putting taxes up, OK, then occasionally taking them down, um, not standing up on issues like, um, you know, again, talking the talk but not walking the walk when it comes to the pro-Palestinian marches and other extremism and the like, that actually it is Lee Anderson who speaks for the average voter, average Conservative voter in this country, and not actually the government or the party that he is leading. No, I don't agree with that at all. Leadership is about taking people to the places that we need to go, not just playing on the anger and building up on the populism. It's very easy for me to take everything that you've just said and say, I agree with you. These are problems. My goodness, nobody's doing anything about it. It's harder to then come up with the solutions of actually what you then need to do. 
and the difficult budget that we've had there is based on the fact that we've just had 14 years of two seismic events that no uh, government would anticipate to deal with, uh, namely uh, the COVID uh, crisis, 400 billion pounds that we didn't expect to spend, and then Ukraine as well, which is a couple of 200 billion pounds more. That's money that we clearly would like to spend elsewhere, clearly like to see in reducing taxes and so forth. But the fact that we now have inflation uh, going down to 2% when it was up in double figures, that with confidence in business is now, now growing uh, and investment is returning back to the UK, and uh, we're leaning in on some of those bigger international issues, such as what's going on in the Red Sea and indeed uh, in Ukraine as well. This prime minister has navigated us back into uh, easier economic climate and indeed into calmer political waters. That's the bigger picture that we need to be focusing on. Well, I mean, a lot of people will agree with a lot of that, but they'll also say this is a government that has lost touch with a lot of things. Um, just to say, by the way, breaking news, in the last minute, Lee Anderson has been introduced by uh, uh, Richard Tyson, former UK leader, as their first ever reform UK MP. So that is now official. Uh, so we'll bring you some comments that he has made in just a couple of moments. Um, but when we talk to things like what we invited you on to talk about, this extremism announcement, a lot of people saying a lot of this is just too little, too late. You've got a government that has been in power for 14 years. You have allowed the creeping, incre you know, increasing um, influence on, and power of Islamist groups, you know, a Batley Grammar School teacher, a cinema chain basically being bullied out of uh, showing a, a, a film. I know you've always spoken, spoken up on a lot of these things, to your credit, but actually very little action being taken. People chanting, you know, from the river to the sea and, and, and holding up even, you know, Hamas slogans and, and flags and things on marches every other week in, in on, on London since uh, the October the 7th massacre. This stuff has gone on far too long. Um, even extremism, I would say, from, I mean, I do think it's a, it's a massive extremism, trans activists who, who are stopping women speaking, who, who, are, who are basically trying to make sure anyone who doesn't agree with their ideology is, is hounded out of their jobs and out of polite society. There is so much going on that the government hasn't done anything about it. Indeed, they've welcomed it into the civil service, they've welcomed it into our schools, welcomed it into the NHS, and they go, well, there's nothing we can do about it. And I think a lot of people, and I think a lot of my audience certainly, go, well, if you, you either care about this stuff or you don't. And announcing a new definition of extremism isn't really going to hack it. Well, I agree with some of what you say, but I also have to say that we are an open and tolerant uh, country. I think the Prime Minister's intervention, his speech outside of Number 10, I think underlined the concerns exactly that is you've been outlining, given the fact that the, what's going on in Gaza and Israel has certainly inflamed matters. It's raised tensions, with MPs being threatened, such as myself, intimidation and threats within communities, and of course, a very ugly by-election as well. So there is a question mark, and I think you allude to this, as to what it is to be British, what are the standards and values that we need to underline and accept. I think I'm right in saying that you spend a bit of time in the United States. I was born there, and you pledge allegiance to the flag every yeah. day. There's an awful I lot of I had to do that at done. school every morning, yeah. So, yeah, exactly, to bind the country together. And I think we're, we're a bit more reserved in that sense. But ultimately, this is the question mark for us as a country to debate and agree as to what we should be doing to ensure that we integrate and bind people together and that we don't see segregation. I will say that I've been affected by both elements of this. Outside my house, vi you, know, a, you know, a violent protest as such. You deal with those with a separate grouping of laws compared with those extremists that killed my brother in Bali in 2002. That was jihadism, that was terrorism. And what the concern has been expressed by these former Home Secretaries is the fact that we mustn't conflate the two. And I think the government recognises that as we look to redefine what extremism is into modern day age. I would also say that we've got individuals who are choosing to test the boundaries of what is acceptable behaviour. I never expected to have to legislate on protecting war memorials, for example. Yeah. You wouldn't anticipate anybody wanting to show an absence of reverence for what they are about. But such is the extremes in which some elements are choosing to go to today. That's why this additional legislation, this additional conversation needs to be had. Well, indeed. I mean, it's... It... It's a conversation needs to be had, but I think a lot of us wanted to have it rather sooner. Just to say, look, Lee Anderson is giving a little speech after moving to be a former UK MP, and he has said it is not controversial to be worried about 
illegal immigration, shoplifters getting away with it, hate marches staging protests in London. Uh, that's obviously what he lost his, uh, his whip for. But he says, we are giving up our streets to a minority of people who literally hate our way of life. He's right, isn't he? Right. Can I can now come back and say everything he said there is not offered a solution? And that goes back to my point as well. Populism, Trumpism is all about building on people's fears and saying, look, the assessment haven't got it right. They don't offer any solutions. So absolutely right to point out some of the challenges that we face. But in to do with the shoplifting and so forth, absolutely, it's been affected in Bournemouth as well. Now, I'm working with the Police and Crime Commissioner to get more police officers to make sure they're patrolling on the front line. Our police numbers went down because of the financial crisis that we inherited in 2010. They've now gone back up. So we're now addressing this. That's the way to deal with this, providing solutions, not just outlining the problems. OK, well, it's great to talk to you. Thank you very much for joining us. That's former Defence Minister Tobias Elwood. Commentator Sam Armstrong is back with me now. You've been chomping at the bit the whole way through that. Look, I, I like Tobias. I think he's a good man. But we, the Conservative Party, are running exactly the strategy that Tobias has been calling for. Everything he said there, that's the strategy that's going on at the moment. And the Conservative Party are bottoming out their support in public. They could not be less popular. There comes a flaw at which point just a loyalty of traditional Conservative voters that have never voted for anyone else is all you've got. And that's where we are. He says that Lee Anderson's got no solutions. He may well be right. But what are the solutions right now being shown? What's yeah. happening to deal with uh, the protests on the street? Nada, nothing. What's happening to deal with shoplifters? Nada, nothing. Nothing is happening. This country is going backwards. People can feel it, I'm afraid. And I say this as a Conservative Party member, that and people are sick and tired. They are frustrated. That's why Lee Anderson is defecting. That's why hundreds of thousands, if not millions, if not tens of millions of Conservative voters, people that want to vote for my party, his yep. party, are defecting right now. Some to reform, some to the Labour Party, and quite a lot more just saying, do you know what, be done with the lot of you, I'm simply not going and to vote. And that's my biggest worry. Well, Lee Anderson, of some of the things he said in the press conference in the last couple of moments, Parliament doesn't understand what the British people want. Uh, he says, I want my country back. And he says he wants to be able to speak, and expects to be able to speak his mind in politics. And he's hit out at the label controversial, saying his opinions are shared by people across the country. Which, again, I think, I think is probably the case, is it not? Uh, well, anyway, um, I don't know if we're going to be able to get to some texts uh, and uh, some tweets. Uh, have, have, we, have we got any of those messages at all? We... OK, I wanted to get some messages. I'd love your reaction to what uh, that photograph of Kate and her children, but also... I want to hear from you about Lee Anderson. He has defected to become Reform UK MP after losing the Tory whip. What is your reaction? Do get in touch. Uh, the number to call is 0344 499 You can text on 87222 and you can uh, get in touch on X at Talk TV as well. Coming up after the break, we are going to be talking more about the Princess of Wales and that photograph. This is Talk TV. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to have an eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. All Rosie. right, Oi, oi, treat go. When JK Rowling says, let's just be honest, it's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman, trans woman. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite Yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. But you might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on what <laughs> just happened. <laughs> Ooh, <we're missing. laughs> 
There was a suggestion by some that maybe it was nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth plinth. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I know it's I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. So he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. That's quite a small statue then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, a trans sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So <laughs> yeah. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist what, what, did fail to, her. Yeah, it was another era. She was 22, mm. we're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place uh, where you get the truth. Welcome back to the show. I'm Julia hartley -Bird. You are with Talk TV. Now, major picture agencies around the world have pulled the first official photograph of the Princess of Wales since her surgery in January amid concerns the picture was manipulated. Uh, we were waiting a, a comment for, uh, for 12 hours plus from Kensington Palace, and eventually it came from the Princess of Wales. She has personally apologised for confusion over the family photograph, saying, like many amateur photographers, I do occasionally experiment with editing. I wanted to express my apologies for any confusion she says, the family photograph we shared yesterday. Of course, uh, she said, I hope everyone's celebrating had a very happy Mother's Day. Well, joining me now to discuss this is uh, royal biographer Angela Levin. Hello, Angela. Hello. Hello there. Hello. I mean, goodness me. Uh, we had a very busy morning since we've been on air. Lots of other things going on as well. This statement from the Princess of Wales, and it is interesting, it's been put out. Look, it was me. I was photoshopping. I'm an amateur photographer, which we already knew. Uh, even though it was Prince William, we're told, who took the photograph of her and the three children. But I'm not sure this resolves everything because why did it take more than 12 hours for her to, well, Kensington Palace to put out this statement when there's been conspiracy theories abounding around the world? Yeah, it's a tricky one, isn't it? Um, yesterday, I thought that this morning, early this morning, I thought it was a prank. A whole load of people were doing that to be unpleasant, but I. Well, you, wait a minute! You thought that it's not that. Who, no, but you thought, what, no, no, what, I don't understand. You thought it was a prank. What by them, by someone at the I palace? Thought, I thought um, a group of people had sent something to the palace, say pretending it's from William, and they oh. just went ahead without looking at it. That's what I thought. Right. In a way, to cover them, I now realise. That was wrong. But what the um, picture still doesn't answer is why there's no wedding or engagement ring on her finger. Did she wipe that out? Um, can't understand that. And also the tree in the background is one that doesn't have leaves at this time of year. So I'm not quite sure about that one either. Nor am I sure that Prince William took the photograph. He's not a photographer. She is the expert. She studied it. She's taken exams in it. She knows exactly how I she's... Mean, with all due respect, my this. husband's not a photographer either. He could manage to take a photo of me with our kid. Yeah, now, no, I don't mind he can't do it, but I just think that to have... It is a beautiful photo on the surface. The children are lovely. I thought it must be from now because Louis, of all three of them, looks much older and seems to have grown a lot. The other two are much... Um, seem almost well, that's the, the thing. Same. It's obviously not from last year. As you said, the, kid, the kids are yeah. growing. But there were, there were so many different things that were raised, weren't there? I mean, I, I noticed straight away, no wedding ring, no engagement ring. She often doesn't wear her engagement ring. It's a very large affair. Obviously, Princess Diana sold ring. But I've not seen a photograph of her without her wedding ring before. Lots of people sending me photographs, which clearly show her showing a wedding ring. You mentioned the tree. There's also issues around Charlotte's sleeve and her wrist, Charlotte's boot heel, um, Charlotte's...
Charlotte's skirt. If you actually look at the photograph in its full original, um, major issues with, um, you know, uh, I think, Kate, crucially, Kate's zip on her jacket, which is clearly not aligned. Um, step behind that's not aligned. So there's loads and loads of different issues. Uh, lots of people commenting on yes. some rather weird thing that Louis is doing with his finger, but um, there was a Photoshop of a Christmas photo, wasn't there? Christmas card last year where uh, some of his photo from his finger had been cut off. Now, either she's not very good at Photoshop or a lot of people are asking, well, what are you photoshopping in? Are you photoshopping in your face from another photograph? Is it that there are, you know, one of the kids wasn't smiling? But why would this be necessary? No, exactly. It wasn't necessary. And the sad thing is that these three gorgeous children were absolutely laughing and looked beautiful. She looked fantastic as well. But with all the question marks, we now look, is it really her of today you know, it's a it's a very difficult one they've made a sort of mess of it and um it's spoilt something that is really made so many thousands of people happy that she was well again but this is the issue isn't it she's not been seen publicly since december so around christmas uh, it's 79 no 76 days uh, we knew uh, mid-january she was going for this operation and, and you know i both agree for good to sake, for the love of God, let this woman have some privacy for obviously a serious operation in hospital two weeks, long rec recovery time. The world can cope without more pictures of Kate. They will be just fine. And yet, putting out this photograph was meant, we are told, not just as a Mother's Day message, but also a, a signal to sort of, you know, stop all the stuff that's going on online. Social media's all washed with rumours about her health, washed with rumours about their marriage and all of that, not giving dignity to any of that stuff. Um, but if you're going to do a photograph like this, for the love of God, put that photograph out with a wedding ring on um, and don't mess about with the photo. They brought this on yes, themselves. It was also to thank people. There have been thousands of people who sent their best wishes and things like that. And I quite understand she wanted to do that. But it's not the sort of thing to take a risk on. It really isn't. And it was risky to start changing all over little bits and pieces and to make this the big story of today um, even more than the Commonwealth Day. Yeah, um, exactly. It's um, a great sh shame that that's happened. Yeah. And Angela I mean, I do hope that before Easter, we'll see another picture of her with her husband and the children, and it's all very natural as well, can be. Well, if they've got any sense, they will do that. Angela Levin, thank you very much. Look, isn't the whole thing, basically, that, that you know, this is incompetence at the palace, isn't it? Well, it seems like the incompetence in the palace is coming straight from the Princess of Wales, and that's arguably the most troubling you bit. You think someone in the office has gone, I think this doesn't, I think this isn't going to fly, this one. Sam Armstrong, thank you very much indeed. Coming up after the break, uh, we'll be talking a little bit more about the manipulated official role photograph and Lee Anderson, defecting to Reform UK. I'm Julia Hartley-Brewer and you're with Talk TV. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to happen and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. All Rosie. right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, it's all she's saying, let's just be honest. When a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman is not a woman. Trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position. But I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. And I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right too. Yay. Quite Yay. right too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get. This. <laughs> but 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 I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight-pound Nokia, reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram, as you probably know. What are you doing? I was just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, <miss it. laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth plinth. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I, know it's, I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested 
Alternatives. There's a sweet potato. That's quite a small statue, then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, <laughs> a trans sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So <laughs> yeah. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist we're, we're, we're did fail to, her. Yeah, we're that supposed to it was another that. era. She was 22. Mm. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. On TV, on radio, and on your smartphone, this is Talk TV. Good morning and welcome back to the show. I'm Julia Hartley Brewer. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online, and on your smart speaker. I'm with you live from 10 until 1. Coming up in this hour, former Tory Deputy Chairman Lee Anderson has defected to Reform UK, becoming their first MP. Will he be the last there? He declared, I want my country back. And the Princess of Wales, that's Kate, has personally apologised for confusion over the family photograph issued by Kensington Palace yesterday on Mother's Day, saying, like many amateur photographers, I do occasionally experiment with editing. This after five major picture agencies pulled the photograph. But why did it take more than 12 hours to say that? And we'll also be talking about the BBC facing a backlash after claiming that Dickensian poverty has striking parallels with today's society. First, though, let's get the latest news headlines with Elliot Gottke. Good morning. The Princess of Wales has apologised after her Mother's Day photograph was criticised for being doctored. In a statement, Kate said that, like any amateur photographer, she often experiments with editing, but that she's sorry for any confusion the picture may have caused. Numerous media outlets were told to remove the picture of the princess and her three kids. Talk TV's royal editor, Sarah Hewson, says it only adds to speculation about the Princess of Wales. And, and actually, it seems now that it was a big mistake to release the photograph in the first place. They've been sticking to the line that the Princess of Wales is recuperating at home with her family and that she's not going to be back to public duties until after Easter. They did release this photograph. Now, you could argue that they tend to release a photograph on Mother's Day every year. So yep. They could say we're not playing into the hands of the conspiracy theorists. Lee Anderson has defected from the Conservative Party, joining Reform UK. The former deputy chairman of the Tories was suspended from the party after he refused to apologise for remarks about London Mayor Sadiq Khan, which sparked an Islamophobia row. Speaking at a Reform press conference, Lee Anderson says that, as an MP, he should be able to speak his mind. It's not controversial to be concerned about illegal immigration. It's not controversial to be concerned about legal migration. It's not controversial to be, you know, worried, concerned about the Metropolitan Police and a failing London Mayor and the hate marchers, the street crime and the shoplifters literally getting away with ruining businesses on a daily basis. At least 50 people have been injured after an incident on an inbound flight at Auckland International Airport. It's reported the LATAM Airlines flight from Sydney suffered a technical problem causing a strong movement. One person is said to be in a serious condition. 13 were taken to hospital. The mother of murdered teenager Brianna Jai has met with the family of one of her killers. Esther Jai says she had a positive and respectful meeting with the mother and uncle of Scarlett Jenkinson, who was behind a plot to kill her daughter. The 16-year-old was stabbed 28 times with a hunting knife in Cheshire last year, but her mum believes it was important to speak with her killer's family. Um, for me, it was important to understand like, how they were as a family, and it was important for me to 
also understand like what 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 has she been going through because um like i suppose that from from the beginning i understand how the crime that's been committed has is, is impacted so many other people and a 39 year old man will today become the first person to be convicted of sending an explicit photograph without permission known as cyber flashing Nicholas Hawkes sent an image to a woman and a 15-year-old girl. The maximum sentence is two years. The government is trying to clamp down on a range of online abuse, trolling and predatory behaviour as part of its Online Safety Act. And Oppenheimer has swept the board at this year's Oscars, winning seven awards. The film took all the top prizes, including Best Actor, Best Director and Best Picture. While presenting the biggest award of the night, Godfather star Al Pacino jumped the gun by announcing the winner before listing the nominees. Killian Murphy, who won Best Actor, paid tribute to the director, Christopher Nolan. That's the latest. Now time for a look at today's weather with Nazanin Gaffer. Times Radio sponsors Talk TV Weather. Hello. Overall, it's looking quite cloudy out there for this afternoon, so a dull start to the week. Once any early mist and fog clears, we still remain with largely cloudy skies across many parts of England, Wales, eastern Scotland and over Northern Ireland. There's also rain across Northern Ireland edging into western Scotland later and under the cloudier skies, especially across eastern areas of the UK, the cloud may be thick enough for some drizzle in places too. A bit of brightness so for Wales and the southwest, where we'll see the highest temperatures up to around 13 degrees Celsius, but only in the high single figures further east. Now, overnight, we see more rain edging in across Ireland and Northern Ireland with some heavy downpours, brisk winds developing there as well. The rain across Scotland heads up towards Shetland and Orkney. Everywhere else, mostly dry with some clear spells, a bit chilly across parts of the northeast, fairly mild elsewhere. Then through tomorrow, that rain continues its journey further eastwards across Scotland, England and Wales. Still some heavy downpours likely and another batch of wet weather also spreading towards Ireland and Northern Ireland before the end of the day. So pretty much everywhere we'll see rain on and off throughout the day, although Northern Scotland doesn't look too bad, mostly fine and bright there. Times Radio sponsors Talk TV Weather. Good morning and welcome back to the show. I'm Julia Hartley-Brewer and you are with Talk TV. Well, joining me right now to run through all the top stories is commentator Sam Armstrong. It's another one of those quiet Monday mornings, Sam. Uh, of course, we've had in the last half hour uh, the defection uh, from the Conservatives, or technically speaking, sitting as an independent MP, to Reform UK of Lee Anderson. Not only is he, uh, well, was he elected as a Tory MP for Ashfield, he was also the deputy chairman of the party, much vaunted as the voice of the Red Wall. Well, he has now gone over to Reform UK as their first sitting MP. Will he be the first? Will he be the last? Well, time will tell when we see, well, will there be more defections by Conservative MPs worried about losing their seats? Will Reform UK, coming up slowly in the polls, be able to win some seats at the next general election? Well, all of that to discuss. I want to hear your reaction. Please give us a call on 0344 499 1000. Text 8722 or get in touch on X at Talk TV. Calls are charged at the national rate. Text cost one standard network rate message. Uh, as I say, joining me is Sam Armstrong. What do you make of this? You work with a lot of Conservative MPs, many of whom were equally unhappy, I would say, with where the government is and the Prime Minister and policies. How significant is Lee Anderson, currently not even sitting as a Tory MP, moving over to Reform UK? Uh, Lee Anderson is a big beast in Conservative politics. There is no doubt that his force of charisma, what he represents, the Red Wall, means that he is speaking perhaps far more than any other backbench MP for an awful lot of 2019 Conservative voters. And remember, the Conservative Party were sent into office with this bumper majority on the back of combining traditional Conservative voters in the South with this new breed of former Labour Red Wall voters in the Midlands and North of England. That's what saw the Conservative Party get elected with a huge majority. But Rishi Sunak is obviously a very different beast from Boris Johnson, who brought those two together. Now, there will be some that are saying today that Lee Anderson 
walked away from the Conservative Party. There are others, including the new Conservative group of MPs who've just put out a statement that says, we blame the Conservative Party yeah. for walking away from the coalition of voters that sent us here in 2019. But it's interesting, the only thing I disagree with you there, when you talked about you know, Boris brought people together in 2019, I think people completely underestimate Brexit you know, Boris was the only, not popular with MPs, but they went, no, the public like him, they trust him, he campaigned on, on Brexit. They, they trusted that he was going to deliver on Brexit. It was Brexit, I think, that would, brought the issue together. But also, the alternative was Jeremy Corbyn, for goodness sake. And I do think we were in very different times. I mean, not to underplay the significance of that. I was on air, we've got that uh, exit poll um, and uh, with Boris's, you know, 80 strong majority victory. But um, this, there's no doubt at all, as you say, Rishi Sunak is very much, I means almost the opposite, isn't he, Boris Johnson, as a sort of a managerial sort of uh, 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 leader. Let's, let's have a little watch and a listen of the, this clip, I think we've just seen it in the news, of Lee Anderson at the Reform UK launch just now uh, of, of him as their first MP. This is what Lee Anderson had to say. It's not controversial to be concerned about illegal immigration. It's not controversial to be concerned about legal migration. It's not controversial to be, you know, worried, concerned about the Metropolitan Police and a failing London Mayor and the hate marchers, the street crime and the shoplifters literally getting away with ruining businesses on a daily basis. I mean, it's, it, he's, he's speaking what a lot of people are thinking. I would like to know what you're thinking. Please do get in touch. Your instant reaction to that news in the last half hour or so, uh, what about Lee Anderson defecting? 0344 499 1000. Love to hear what you have to say about that. Um, he, he's not saying anything controversial, Sam. No, and crucially, there are two sides to, to Lee Anderson. The first is the policies he's saying, traditional Conservative policies. The other side is how he's saying them. Yeah. Rishi Sunak... Jeremy Hunt, this entire cabinet, very polished, very smooth, very quite boring, conservative, suited and booted politicians. Boris Johnson, Lee Anderson were a different breed. They, tell, they say it as it is. They talk in the language of ordinary yeah. people. But everyone's very patronising about that, aren't they? But actually, he's just, you know, he's just he's talking how normal people speak, who, I don't know, maybe, you know, didn't go to top private schools like, like, like a lot of those people and just like, speak like normal people. This, this is the thing. You know, I'm supposedly one of you know, that, that sort of North London metropolitan. Lee Anderson appeals to people like me. He's saying what we're thinking. When he, again, you cannot like someone's language about, and I thought I thought it was just clumsy and not quite accurate about Islamist control, Sadiq Khan and, uh, and, uh, and Keir Starmer, which he was suspended from the party. But in terms of the sentiment, in terms of the failure to stand up to these people, um, I thought he was right. And I think that's what most people do. Most people don't sit there like, a, you know, editor of The Guardian, sort of, you know, nitpicking around little words. They want to know if someone is basically on their side. And there is this feeling, people looking at the budget last week, which just was a complete... Blur. It was just blur, wasn't it? I mean, yeah, OK, we've got some money back. Well, it's our own money, which you took anyway, um, which we did, which you've not been spending very well. Um, public services are still terrible. We still can't pay our bills. People are still struggling, all of that. It, 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 there is a real feeling that, you know, and all the culture war issues like the trans stuff and the Islamist stuff, that the, this government is totally and utterly out of touch. Yeah, and crucially, unlike Lee, the public want to see exactly what Lee's got, guts. Has the Prime Minister got guts? That's the real question. Would you like to sit down for a pint with him? That's another one of the yeah. questions that voters ask themselves. And increasingly, the language that Rishi Sunak is using to talk about this country, the problems, we just had Tobias Elwood, a Sunak ally on, saying that everything was fantastic, everything was going to plan. We've got 15% off here, 10% up there, 5% here. We're do, following this point and that point at this point of the plan, and the public are saying, yes, but my life, every day, it's things are more expensive, services are worse, you're taking more in taxes, and you are increasingly ignoring me on all of the things that matter yeah. to me and using complicated words. And telling and telling me, that, but also not standing up to the people who are telling us that our country is terrible. People hate that. I mean, to myself, we've talked about, you know, we've both been at school in the American point, you know, you salute the flag in the morning, you sing the national anthem. I did that when I, for two years when I was at primary school in America. 
I thought that was rather nice, actually, that sort of feeling of camaraderie. I'm not sure we'd have to bring that back in this country, but it would be nice if our teachers, paid for by our taxes, uh, didn't spend their entire time telling us that our country is a horrible, horrible place. Um, it's terrible for girls, it's terrible for anyone who's black or Asian, terrible, a, terrible, a terrible history and going nowhere. I mean, and we're all, go oh, we're all going to die from climate change. I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe we'd like someone to stand up against that. Maybe the people to do that should be the government who, who pass on our taxes to pay these people. I don't know. Julia, the people that run this country are embarrassed by it. They are. They are they ashamed are. of us, of our history, of our heritage, of our values, of our future, of the lot. Yeah. And actually, there are a lot of people that will turn around and say, oh, Lee Anderson's a very negative politician. Reform, they're all, they're all about negative. They're all about, hey, actually, actually, I look at them at times, and not a member, not a supporter, member of the Conservative Party, but I look at some of what they stand for and I say, actually, that's a more optimistic vision more, yeah, And country. I think people, it's, you know, is that hope, hope and change, that's what people want. Um, here's another question, though, about uh, Lee Anderson. Is this about, uh, with all due respect to a lot of politicians, just about Lee Anderson? Uh, he's a man, you know, he's been paid by £100,000 for a weekly show on a rival channel. Um, uh, he's a man that, you know, it's, it's, a lot of it has been about Lee Anderson. Is this about him saving his skin because he, he's basically been told, unless you apologise, you're not getting your, you're not getting the whip back and you won't be able to win your seat? Is he, um, or is, is it too much of an ego? Is this about, as often people fear, you know, the Galloway style thing? It's about Lee Anderson rather than what he, the people of, say, you know, Ashfield, his constituency. So what if it is? Is he any different to any Tory MP that's clinging on yep. to the party whip because they see it as their meal ticket to 20, 30 years of 90 grand no, a year very fair point. being a Tory MP? I'm not going to have this notion that Lee Anderson, because he stood up and done something brave, is actually the opportunistic one. The but craven ones are the ones that disagree with the Conservative Party and stick in it in order to save their own skin. What is going to be fascinating over the coming weeks and months is the... The, the the little the little black book from the Tory whips of all the things that they think that uh, they've got on Lee Anderson coming out in the papers, coming out in the media. But of course, the answer to that will always be, but you appointed him as deputy chairman of the party, and he wasn't he wasn't sacked as deputy chairman. He resigned so he could vote on the Rwanda bill. Again, another issue that people feel very strongly about. Uh, well, we are going to. I'd love to get your texts and calls about that. I also want to talk about. I'm sorry, I do want to talk about it. Um, the, this the, this Kate photo. Does it really matter? Someone puts out a photograph. I mean, I, I, I'm so it doesn't. Absolutely, you can argue it doesn't. However, when there is an awful lot of speculation about the health of a woman who will uh, one day be uh, the queen of this country, uh, when she has not been seen at all in public uh, for 76, well, it's 76 days now, uh, and she had serious surgery to be recuperated. There's been one photograph seen in, uh, apparently her in a, being, being driven in a car by her mother, Carol. Um, when they put out a photograph of her and her three children as a Happy Mother's Day photo, which we're told is all about, you know, basically you know, reassuring the public she's absolutely fine and no problem. When there are so many issues with the editing of this photo or manipulation, as pretty much every one of the world's major picture and news agencies has used, they've basically recalled this photo and said, no, no, this photo was put out by Kensington Palace. We are so unhappy with what they call the manipulation of this photo, the photoshopping going on. They are not happy to put that picture out uh, through their agencies. That, as far as we're aware, has never been, been done before with an official photograph issued by Kensington Palace. Now, we went, well, 10 and a half, sorry, 12 and a half hours without any response from Kensington Palace. They obviously have a, a late morning on a, a, a Monday morning. However, uh, just about uh, half an hour ago, we got a statement from the Palace saying the Princess of Wales has personally apologised for confusion over the family photograph issued by the Palace, saying, like many amateur photographers, I do occasionally experiment with editing. I wanted to express my apologies for any confusion the family photograph we shared yesterday caused. I hope everyone is celebrating at a very happy Mother's Day. Signed C for Catherine. This has been pointed out to me by a lawyer who's got in touch that at no point in this statement has she said that she edited the photo. It says, like many amateur photographers, I do occasionally experiment with editing. She's apologising for any confusion. Well, what's confusing is a huge number of, when you look close up and you look at a highly pixelated, highly, highly pixeled um, photograph, you can see so many things where lines don't align. It's not just this, the Charlotte's hand, it's also the zip on Kate's jacket. There's a step behind them that's not aligned. There's a boot that's got a bit of the heel missing. Most of the questions I raised yesterday were about the fact that she wasn't wearing a wedding band, which would seem to be unusual. 
she, since all photographs of her previously, I've yet to see one where she's not wearing a, her, her wedding band, maybe not wearing her engagement ring on a regular basis because it's a rather clunky big thing, but wearing her wedding band. Given the online conspiracy theories and the rumours, you would have expected her to... She pays attention to detail, for goodness sake. She would have had that on. Um, what on earth has been going on, Sam Armstrong? And does any of it matter? Well, actually, it's interesting. The royal family have always had a weird thing with hands. The late Queen was said to hate her hands so much that she always wore, wore gloves. King Charles, of course, has these very uh, chunky, swollen hands such that he has to have gloves specially made for him. So it seems to be that hands are always the undoing uh, of, of the royal family. But look, this is raising serious questions. And the trouble with editing these photographs is the moment it looks fake, and it, it is fake, you know, what we're seeing here is not reality, trust evaporates. So yeah. I now agree with Piers Morgan of this parish that the royal family really do need to issue the original photo, yeah. so we can see it in person. And it may well just have been, as lots of people are saying, I mean, I'm in awe of people who've got this ability, you know, that that actually, you know, one of the kids was looking away, another kid was going to say, I'm sorry, you can get a photo. You can get a photo for people looking at the camera. I, I managed to do this. I was doing family photos at a, 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 my nephew's third birthday. I managed to get people looking at the camera with much younger, two and three-year-olds, absolutely fine. Yeah, you take ten to get one where they're all looking at the camera, but that's what you do. I mean, everyone's going, oh, it's wonderful photograph by Prince William. I mean, I'm just looking at it down the side. It's not that complicated to do. Does any of this matter? I mean, again, I think it matters when the palace issues a photograph that has been manipulated. The agencies are so upset about it that they pull it and that the palace takes more than 12 hours to do, to do anything about it. Now, I'm sorry, that suggests a level of incompetence or something else going on in the palace. This is going to make the conspiracy theories go even further. Yeah, look, there's no doubt this was attempted to be or planned to be something to quell yep. rumours. This was that was the Hasn't PR done play that. here. This totally unforced error is going to mean that the royal family are not only going to have to have issued the apology that they've done, Catherine herself apologising, but in the days ahead, we're going to need to see another photograph. We are. Yep. It's just a reality because the rumour mill is now going to yep. go into And again, overdrive. no one forced them to do this. This is a totally forced error, isn't it? Let's talk about things that I think are rather more important, our freedom to protest on the streets. We have seen every other Saturday since October the 7th, starting, by the way, before uh, there was any action by Israel, it's more point worth making, pro-Palestinian uh, uh, demonstrations. A lot of the organisers of these have very, very close links with Hamas. Uh, four out of six, as I won't believe, and yet people choose to go on these uh, marches. I don't think they're hate marches. I think there are people who genuinely are concerned about innocent uh, Palestinians, particularly children, who are dying as a result of this war. However, I do think their concern should be more about Hamas and the fact they're using these, uh, you know, these civilians as human shields rather than uh, with, uh, with Israel. But there we are. But uh, we're going to have a new definition of extremism uh, from the Leveling Up and Housing Secretary uh, later this week, and that's focused attention on a lot of this. But we saw extraordinary footage at the weekend of a man who held up a sign Okay, grammar in a second language, perhaps not, is an Iranian uh, 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 a man. Hamas is terrorist sign. He held it up at the pro-Palestinian march. We've got the images here. He's just holding it up, totally peaceful, as he's entirely entitled to do. In fact, I'm rather tempted to do myself the next time there's a march on. Um, and uh, people walk by, they're not happy with it. Police are clearly watching. Um, he, he is then basically attacked by men who ripped the sign from him. He is then chased by police, pulled out, and he is arrested. Later, he is what's called de-arrested. However, the men, as far as we're aware, who ripped away his sign, which is a criminal act, blatantly in front of many uh, dozens of people, was not arrested. What does that tell us about our two-tier policing, Sam? Well, it firstly tells me, and I disagree with you here, this is a hate march. If you are incapable of walking past somebody holding up a sign that you disagree with without resorting to physically... No, but most them. people did walk past without resorting to physical violence. Look, I'm sorry, since when have we drawn this as the standard? If there is a group of you amongst a protest that cannot physically walk past someone who is holding up a sign with which they disagree without resorting to physical violence, this is a hate march, OK? And then for the police, the Metropolitan Police, to turn around and say, aha, I know who we're going to nick for this. Mm. Not the mob, yeah. not the riot, not those committing, in my opinion, a fray or violent disorder, serious criminal offences. I know 
we are going to nick the counter protester. That is a disgrace. That says to me that the Metropolitan Police has lost its way, yep. that it needs placing into special measures, that we need to have a complete and utter review of the way in which they are policing these protests week in, week out. Yep. It is not the Metropolitan Police's job to act as a kind of national social services here, to yep. try and calm everybody Absolutely. down. It's the Metropolitan Police's job to enforce the law. Not only did they fail to enforce the law last weekend, when they uh, failed to arrest any of those that assaulted him, they broke it themselves when they arrested a man who had done nothing, not yeah, nothing Exactly. Wrong. They said they said he was arrested for assault, and then they looked at the video, and we were going to be talking to the man, my Hattuzzi, who actually filmed that. Um, he was with him. So he... He, um, you know, they were shown the video and it was clear, so he wasn't arrested. But again, he shouldn't have been arrested anyway. The sign he was holding up is official government policy. Hamas are terrorists. They are a prescribed terrorist organisation. Why would anybody who is concerned about innocent civilians in, Pal in, in Gaza ever, ever be worried about a sign stating the clear and blatantly incontrovertible fact that Hamas are terrorists. Yeah, and let's not even pretend that this is the first time no. that this chap has been arrested. He was arrested a couple of weeks ago, again, for holding up a sign that says that a group of men who invaded Israel and went around raping, killing and murdering, kidnapping people that they are still holding is a terrorist group. Last week, we sat next to one of the victims and I have been yeah. haunted ever since she by the words that she said. And for the Metropolitan Police to take not the side of those standing up to those terrorists, but to take the side of those baying mobs that can't walk past somebody without committing grotesque yep. criminal acts of violence is a disgrace. I mean, genuinely, I, I, I'm thinking, you know, I will want to go on one of these marches and hold up a sign saying Hamas are terrorists. Um, I think, you know, all right thinking people should, because we're a statement of fact. I, I, I was thinking, I'd want to stand near the police so I could be safe because I would not trust the people in that crowd to keep, maintain my safety. But I wouldn't trust the police now. Now, if, if law-abiding citizens cannot go on a supposedly peaceful march, a humanitarian concern march, and hold up a sign that is official government policy and an incontrovertible fact, I don't think that those, yeah, those marches are safe to be on our streets. That seems very clear to me. But there we are. Old-fashioned, eh? Freedom of speech actually being there, but not freedom to intimidate. I mean, this isn't complicated. I wonder whether the government's going to get that balance right when they have their new extremism definition. We'll talk about that. Just finally, I do want to talk, before we get to text and calls, about the Oscars. It happened overnight. Oppenheimer, I finally got to see it about a week or so ago. Actually, it's a very good film. It's a brilliant film. So glad that uh, Nolan has finally got, uh, frankly, the, uh, the, the Oscar he should have got for pretty much every film he's ever made, to be honest with you. Seven Oscars in the end. And despite this being an Oscars where you, there were so many diversity rules that you had to, you had to have like you know a, a certain, the lead has to you know one of the leads has to have has to have this sort of diversity background, ethnic minority, gay, trans, something, or thirty percent of the rest of the cost. Absolute load of abject nonsense. It was remarkably unwoke in terms of who won. Yeah, and the best of all, that the, the great Barbieheimer question has yeah. now been settled decisively in the Oppenheimer direction, which is where it should Quite have been. Rightly. And Barbie was a great fun film, but it's not an Oscar winning film. I mean, come on, people. Uh, anyway, uh, thank you very much indeed. More from Sam Armstrong coming up now. I want to hear from you about the former Tory deputy chairman, Lee Anderson. He's defected to Reform UK, has become their first MP. Will he be there last? Or what's going to happen next? What is your reaction? Give us a call 0344 499 1000. Text 8722 or get in touch on X at Talk TV. Calls to charge the national rate. Text cost one standard network rate message. Uh, let's get to some of those messages right now. Um, hopefully, I've got some of them. Margaret says, Brilliant. He says, What many of us are saying, we want our country back. Liz says, Hopefully, more will follow. The Conservatives are lost. And Lucy says, Perhaps the Tories shouldn't have thrown him under the bus then. He speaks for many people. Yeah. Thought that would be what the reaction would be. Uh, you've also been getting in touch on the phones. So let's go to Daniel in Epsom. Hello, Daniel. Hey, Julia. You're all right. Very well indeed. What do you make of this defection? Well, I, I look out there, and and the Conservatives are weak, consocialist, centrist, overly liberal, unwilling or unable to act or do anything. And you've got an even worse, uh, far left, uh, radical Islam Labour Party. Yet in the distance, there's a beacon of light, and it's Lee Anderson. And him joining reform, I think, is a major turning point for us. 
Do you I think, think that's I... going to be a game changer? <clears throat> Here's the thing, though. You know, we've seen this years back with UKIP when we had, you know, a, a defection, and then and then there was a UKIP. And it didn't translate to the election because of this first past the post system, which I do defend, although it has its problems with smaller parties in terms of their ability to get over the line. Yeah, but what I'd like to see is half of the Conservative Party that are Lib Dems in blue ties can stay there. But the other half that are actually of the right and realise that the country is crying out for a tough right, uh, centre-right government that we voted for, they should also join reform. I think as well, most of us out there in the country know that immigration or as a, as a, as a topic is... It is bleeding into every part of our lives, yeah. transport, schools, education, yeah. the entire infrastructure is creaking because of that one issue. Immigration from the third world is ruining our country and people like Lee Anderson are coming out yeah. and, and saying, saying what we're... I just want to pick up, it's interesting because you talked about the Conservatives, they're unable to do something. This is the thing, they're not unable, they're choosing not to. They are able to do it and that's the frustration people have because they... Rishi Sunak and others, they talk the talk, they, they say all the right things and then... And then nothing happens. Yeah, but nothing. They always talk tough and nothing happens. I mean, Labour, if you think it's bad now, people out there in the UK, when if Labour get in, it's going to get a whole lot worse. The, the green agenda's going to explode. Yeah. You'll have more restrictions, more ULEs, more mass immigration. Everything that you don't like now under Labour will get worse. However, we have to vote reform and give the Conservatives a kick in the you know what because they need to understand that they... They haven't given the public... I mean, look, for 20 or 30 years, we have given them explicit instructions, stop yeah. illegal immigration and bring legal immigration down to low numbers, and they, and they have ignored us and they, or they won't do it. So well, what do we do? It's been 20 or 30 years. We're yeah. going to have to... No party has a God-given right to, to, to be in power. Daniel, very impassioned. A lot of people will be agreeing with you in terms of like, the policies we've been asking for and voting. They ask us, we tell them, and then they go, we're just going to do something different. Oh, sorry about that, but don't worry. Next time we'll do it. Uh, Daniel, I really appreciate you getting in touch. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, do get in touch on the phones. 0344 499 1000 is the number to call. Coming up on, after the break, uh, more on Lee Anderson, Defected Reform UK, and more political ways for to Rishi Sunak over the Tory leadership plotting and what's going on with Angela Rayner and that council house. Was she, as an old neighbour says, effing lying? I'm Julia Hartley Brew, and you're with Talk TV. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to have an eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, it's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman, trans woman. Is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite Yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get. This. <laughs> but 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 I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight-pound Nokia, reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram, as you probably know. What are you doing? I was just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, <miss it. laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth plinth. Mr Khan apparently wasn't <laughs> too keen on that. I'm sorry. Huh? I, know it's, I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue, then. <laughs> wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> ah, a trans sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So <laughs> <you've got> <laughs> Yeah. For... Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. 
And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist we're, we're, we're did fail to, her. Yeah, we're yeah, supposed absolutely. to have it was moved another on from era. That. She was 22, mm. we're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Welcome back to the show. I'm Julia hartley Brewer, and you are with Talk TV. Now, political woes for Vichy Sunak. He faces more leadership plotting by backbench Tories after last week's budget. Well, he's already just lost one would have been a backbench Tory if he hadn't been suspended. He's gone over to Reform UK. That's Lee Anderson. Meanwhile, Angela Rayner has been branded an effing liar by her old neighbour over claims by the Labour deputy leader over the sale of her former council house. Well, joining me now to discuss all of this is former advisor to Tony Blair when things were so much simpler and happier, uh, John McTurnan, uh, and also still with us, of course, uh, in the studio is a conservative, uh, well, former, uh, conservative <laughs> and former and, and commentator, Sam Armstrong. Thank you very <laughs> much. I'm trying to work out how to describe him, just, you know, agitated. No, no, I wouldn't no, say that. No, I would never no, say that. I'm no, teasing no. you. I'm Voice teasing of reason, you. Um, yes. John, John, let's, uh, let's start with you. Uh, let's talk First of all, I've got to get your reaction to the news that Lee Anderson currently, well, until half ten this morning, suspended as a Tory MP, sitting as an independent. He was previously the Labour, sorry, the, God, previously Labour councillor, Conservative deputy uh, chairman, uh, resigned over the Rwanda bill so he could vote for that, and then got suspended after comments he made about Sadiq Khan and Islamist extremism being in control of London. Um, he is now the first ever Reform UK MP. What does that tell you? Uh, it tells me that um, Rishi Sunak has absolutely no chance of winning the next election, uh, which we've all known uh, for about 18 months, but um, I think that's the last brick taken out of the wall. They split the fight on the right is going to be the, the real battle for Sunak between him and reform. Uh, he's nowhere close to challenging the Labour Party uh, at the weekend popularity of the Tory party sank to list trust levels. I think it will go it will go further south. A lot of people say, you know, weeks, a long time in politics. We're going probably all the mm. way to uh, October, I think, most likely uh, month for the election. I don't know one's going to yeah. be going out. I'm got I've never <laughs> I've never missed an election. I ain't going out to vote <laughs> in, in a cold winter's day in January. I don't think anyone is. Um, but again a lot of people are wondering what well, if they don't think they're going to win, what are they clinging on to do? Because they don't seem to be getting anything done. Here's the thing though. There's been this obviously this thing yeah. with the Tories. Do they go for do they go to move, keep peeled yeah. on the left, but on the right, how do they bring, as Sam Armstrong was talking about earlier, this coalition yeah. Yeah. that brought them into power in 2019? Bearing in mind, they still got a, what was it, a 60? Best part of 60 but it, but majority? But it was an 84-seat majority. Yeah. They managed to throw that away. But how, do, how, 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 how would they go back? It does appear they are going, they sort of shift a little bit to the right, not sure about that, shift yeah, a bit no. back to the left, but we're always told it's the middle ground is where elections are won. That's what Keir Starmer's doing. Um, is is that where they are one now? Where is the middle ground? Because I don't think the middle ground now represents the average Conservative voter. The pro the, one of the problems in politics is that if you are dominated in your party by the edge of your party, as Labour was under Corbyn, as Sunak is now and by the right, you end up fighting within your own party and not talking to the public, and you leave a space open. For a long time, you know, there's a space open, opened up by Corbyn, and it was taken by Boris Johnson. They, he won the centre and he won the right. He had a centre-right government. They're now drifting to the right. They've left a space open. And that's where Keir has gone, on crime, on NHS, on cost of living, on housing. Those are the concerns. Yep. And if you talk about... If you're, if you're dragged to have a conversation on the right, you're really having a conversation about the shape of the Tory party after its defeat. But, but here's the thing. You, a lot of the things I think mm. you as a Labour man would be yeah. talking about as things on the right, concerns about immigration, yeah. uh, concerns about, say, you know... I don't know, you know, high level of benefits, people not working and, mm. and things like that. Um, I think those are concerns. I think the polls are quite clear just as much of Labour voters and they're being ignored. But, yeah, a lot of people are going, well, the Tories have had their go. They've had 14 years. <laughs> well, time to, give an, time to give the other side a go. Rather than, and the polling is very clear, rather than a, oh, Keir Starmer's the man. I, I don't, actually, the polling I, is very soft for I don't, I don't. I don't particularly care 
how we get 547 MPs. I do care that we do get 547 MPs. The landslide, every vote that was, that There was one landslide. poll that predicted out of the 650 <laughs> MPs, that ava yeah. jobs available, that you could have that sort of a landslide. You know that's not going to happen on Monday. Uh, I think it's un I think it is under-indexed. I think there's far more likely to see the by-election uh, patterns of people voting for whoever gets the Tories out. That's the crisis for the Tory party, is there's a discourse about how could they possibly get back. They can't, they should hold the election tomorrow. Yeah. They should actually really go as fast as they the, can. The interesting thing, of course, is that Reform UK mm. is seen as sort of like by many on the sort of, you say, yeah. the right of the party. They actually, bizarrely, would would help Labour even more because yes. Reform UK would largely be taking votes, some from Labour, yeah. but largely from the yeah. Tories. 2019 Brexiteer, yeah. Boris yeah. And Tories, um, in the red, particular Red Wall seats and others, though. Mm. They, take, they take away a bit of the Tory yeah. vote they make it very much more possible for you to take those seats back in Labour. Yeah, no, no. When you get three or four uh, candidates able to win in a seat, uh, it gets you know, if there's four candidates, you get down to winning on 26% of the vote. Mm -hmm. So anything that splits the votes that the Tory party are holding onto at 25% is a bonus for Labour. And some of these YouGov well, polls have the Tories down at 20. In that case, the argument for the Tories should be for them to actually move to appeal to the right. They're not going to appeal to your possible voters on the left, in which case, shouldn't they, I mean, there's people I think like Sam Armstrong and others have been arguing a lot of the time, and Lee Anderson, yeah. Suella Bravman and everyone, you know, Robert Jenrick, I mean, you name all the people who are no longer in government, basically say need to, they need to be threat because it is the threat from reform that is going I, to damage Tories, look, not I get, Labour. Look, I, I get the argument, which is that for reform run 13 and we are on 23, 23 and 13 equals 36, and now we're competitive with Labour. Mm -hmm. The difficulty is that you don't know how many people in the 25% the Tories are holding on to it would be absolutely scunnered, would be disgusted if they shifted further uh, on issues like Rwanda or further on issues like benefits or yeah. further on issues uh, like in, in, endorsing uh, yeah. the, the these, are, these are very wide coalitions. Yeah, that's, this is the issue. National parties like the Tories and Labour have big coalitions and reform are much more, I think, tightly focused geographically and socially. Yeah, as, as a lot of smaller parties are. We yeah. say that with the Lib Dem, yeah. SNP, yeah. Yeah. obviously yes, Green yeah. Party as well. Sam Armstrong, you, you work with a lot of the Conservative MPs who've been not just privately but publicly very critical of the government and have ur been urging there to be a, a move to tackle. Again, I don't... I've always found it fascinating when people say, oh, well, I'm right wing. So I don't think a concern about rising crime, safety on our streets, um, illegal immigration, and things like that. I, I, governments, and governments not delivering on the policies they have on things like, you know, limiting, or at least cutting and not doubling uh, legal immigration. I don't think these are right wing policies at all. But that's what people say. Do, do you think that, that the, this reform UK mm. defection by Lee Anderson is going to really seriously damage the Tory party? Uh, un undoubtedly, and, and John speaks a lot of sense. I think where he's wrong is actually where the middle ground of British politics is. Yeah. And actually, I think on social issues, immigration, crime, etc., it's probably a long way to the right of where John is, probably to the right of where the Conservative Party is. But on economic issues, it's to the left. There's this saying that's going round in politics again and again at the moment that the British public want you to hang the pedos and fund the NHS. <laughs> and there are some in the Tory party that right now will be looking for a leader that could go into an election and possibly a change now and call for exactly that with the hope that they could uh, bring back just a few more percentage points, which is the difference between 540 seats for Labour and Complete, 390 yeah. seats. Whether it's a total <laughs> annihilation or not. John McTernan, um, can I also ask about what's going on in the Labour Party? Um, Angela Rayner's under a bit of pressure. I think because other things are happening, perhaps not on the front page constantly, but in a new a biography of her by, you know, Tory, former, former Tory peer, <laughs> Lord Ashcroft. Um, but, you know, the source doesn't matter if the facts are borne out. She's been accused, and just hit back at this, former neighbour mm. who's now in her 80s, who accused her of being... I'm, I'm being delicate mm. here, an effing liar, uh, over the sale, well, the purchase of sale of her council house that she that she had. And she was given the, uh, you know, the discount that everyone was got, I think 25% mm. at the time. But she claimed that her, this, that was her, that was where she, her, her residence was. However, at the time, her husband, and father of her children, was living, claiming to be living in another property. Now, it's a big question. She says, well, she wasn't at that property at the time. Now, the neighbours say, yes, you were. We saw you there all that time. We know you were. Now, it strikes me that if I had Angela Raining living ne next to me, whether it was 30 years ago, 10 years ago, or yes, I would probably be aware of whether she did or she didn't. She strikes me the sort of person you'd notice. Is this going to become quite a big issue? No. I mean, it's an accusation that possibly the person who could be our next deputy prime minister, if the Labour polls that yeah. be believed, 
it broke the law. No, it's not about breaking the law, is it? Is it is about breaking the law. It's, no, on well, on birth, birth certificates and documents, they don't match. There is a, it is a simple matter of fact. I don't know whether anyone's lying or not. I'm not in a position to do that. But, you know, birth certificates for a son about where he, she claimed to live at that time and, and uh, uh, the documents for, for selling, sort of buying and then selling this home don't match up. The difficulty about, the difficulty about this story is capital gains tax and designation of your primary residence is a complicated set of uh, and something most of us never have to deal with. Most of us don't have to deal with. And it's very hard to explain, too, that your primary residence can be different from the house that you live in. Yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a thing for taxation. MPs have done very well on that over the years. Any, any, the, one of the iron laws of scandals is they have to be simply understandable and simply did you, describable. Did you, have a, did you have a party in number 10? Did you have a curry and a beer yeah. if you're Keir well, Starmer? And the answer is there was a party, but the curry and the beer were well within the rules, as we well know. They were. Um, they, well, they actually were, but um, they were. Uh, NHS England were consulted the before. I had to obey the rules myself, they were. <laughs> but they, you're, but saying, the, you're saying, you're saying, doesn't it really matter what it, happened. It's too no complicated. It's too complicated. Most no one cares. won't understand no, about it, no, so it's okay. No, no one cares. It, it's not, it's okay. It, I believe what Angie says when, she's, when she says that she complied with CGT. I'm, I, and I've read what Dan Needle, the tax expert, says, and he says it's entirely plausible that that's what she did. So I'm happy to leave it as it is. The, pro the problem with making it a scandal story is you've got to have a thing that cuts right through and people go, oh my goodness, whoa. And the difficulty is there's too many other stories as well. It's not just it's too complicated. The Lee Anderson story is much more interesting. Well, there, there is that. You're nodding along to that, Sam. <laughs> yeah, I think John's right, actually. I, look, here's the thing. I think she was lying. I think she was dishonest. But here's the thing. The public have priced in already the fact that politicians are liars, they're dishonest, and they're on the make. So it's not going to change anyone's okay. mind. Thank you very much. <laughs> really good to have you both join us. Thank you very much. Let me go to uh, our, uh, our question, though, that we were asking you about Lee Anderson <laughs> defecting to Reform UK. What's your reaction? Give us a call on 0344 499 text 87222, or you can get in touch <laughs> on X at Talk TV. Alistair says this move by Lee will upset the lefties and the failed Tory leadership somewhat, which is a good thing. Uh, Diana says now we will see that Reform UK mean business. You go for it, Mr Anderson. And Debbie says, hurrah. Yes, we all want our country back. This is, of course, what Lee Anderson said at that press conference about an hour or so ago. You've also been getting in touch on the phones. Do keep those calls coming in. Let's go to Brian. He's in London. Hello, Brian. Good morning, Julia. Good, Good morning. morning. Uh, what do you make of this defection? I've been so excited that I went and joined a reform. Give them 25 quid. And the Literally reason I since the news in the last hour. Sorry? It's since the news of Lee Anderson. Yeah, 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 because wow. um, we need a leader. We need someone that's going to, um, what do we say, speak our language? I thought it sounds a bit boring, but we are going to speak our language. But really, the reason I joined is, is because Lee Anderson realises that there's going to be hundreds of MPs that are going to have to, conservative MPs that are going to be up against reform now, and they're all going to lose. So uh, I, I don't really care much about the ones that are liberal or the ones that are uh, Greens. They, you know, I don't mind them losing. But there's a lot of conservative, small-c conservative people that really in the, are in the wrong party. The conservative party is, the, is not conservative, so they should go in. They should join reform because they're going to be they're going to be out of work in about what between three. Do you want? Wait a minute. Time. Do you want them joining reform because they want to keep their seats and pay their mortgages and save their own skins, or or because they actually agree with it, or would they be better off staying the conservative party and actually changing the policy of the party, or I don't know, changing the leader? Uh, well, I think I think uh, Rishi's a full guy. You know, his ego and the, the money men that run the Tory party, they pushed him forward. And he... Uh, because, really, he's an accountant. Rishi is a, he's a time and motion guy that turns up at your factory and says, <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 you've all got to work a bit harder. And you know what? We might have to lay 20 people off. But he gets in his Porsche and disappears and puts in a, puts in a bill for £100,000. Ouch. Ouch, well, Brian. Absolutely. That's what these people are like, shiny suits, mate. They turn up, they know it all, but they're, uh, they benefited from a great... They benefited from a great education. And what they've done is used it to hit us with. Absolutely. Fact. Brian, thank you very much indeed. I know uh, Richard Tyson, Reform UK, will be very happy with that call. Um, as is he, very amused from both John McTernan and Sam Armstrong. Thank you very much indeed to them for joining us. Uh, coming up after the break, the BBC is facing a backlash after claiming that Dickensian poverty has striking parallels with today's society. They're mad, aren't they? I'm Julia Hartley Brewer, and you're with Talk TV. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker.
Now, you ain't going to have an eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of Cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman. Trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. And I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Hey, Quite hey. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram, as you probably know. What are you doing? I was just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, listen. <laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth plinth. Mr Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I, know what's, I know what's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue, then. <laughs> wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, a trans... Sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So anyway, <laughs> just, 40 yeah. minutes, 40... Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, t when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist what, 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 did fail her. Yeah, we're supposed to have moved on from that. Era. She was 22, mm. we're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Welcome back to the show. I'm Julia Hartley-Brew and you are with Talk TV. Now, the BBC is facing an entirely predictable backlash after claiming that Dickensian poverty has striking parallels with today's society. Of course they do. Joining me right now to discuss this is historian and senior fellow at the New Culture Forum. That's Rafe hadel -Manku. Good morning to you, Rafe. Always a pleasure to be with Lovely. you, Julia. <laughs> oh, thank you very much for joining us. Very much appreciate this. Um, this is a uh, Radio 4... Uh, publicity announcement for new adaptations of Dickens' novels Hard Times, Little Dorrit and Our Mutual Friend. And in this uh, uh, publicity, it's written, in the autumn, there will be a new triple bill with titles in which the well-loved writer's critique of Victorian society has particularly striking parallels with life in Britain today. I mean, I mean, genuinely comparing people being in workhouses, children begging on the streets, Dickensian, we know what we mean by Dicken Dickensian level of poverty. Um, and claiming that, that that is basically has parallels with how we live life today. Are these people certifiably insane? Well, you might think that, but I think we're at the stage really where we um, need to think about renaming the BBC the ABBC, the, the Anti British Broadcasting Corporation. Because you're quite right, you know, either they're mad or they've been completely captured by this sort of pernicious anti British, anti Western. Uh, ideology that tries to, you know, they're, they're supposed to be celebrating and promoting Britain, and instead of that, they constantly seem to want to denigrate and undermine the nation. Remember, it was just last year that the BBC pulled a similar stunt when it tried to shoehorn anti-colonialism into its adaptation of Great Expectations, a novel that's got nothing to do with colonialism at all. Yeah. And you're quite right, comparing poverty in 21st century Britain to the 19th century is sort of like comparing a scraped knee to having gangrene. 
I mean, <laughs> that, 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 that is exactly that is the level of you know unnecessary um, you know. You know, the idea that there's a parallel here in the comparison, but it's like it's it's almost like they, they feel compelled to do it. The people who work in the BBC, whether it's on air or the people, the produ production teams or the people who you know, direct all these document documentaries and things like that, they they and indeed even the fictionalized dramas, they can't stop themselves. It, it's it's like it's like they've got hiccups and they just can't. Doesn't matter how much water they drink, they can't get rid of it. They need to criticise this country, and who are we kidding? We know what they're trying to do. They're criticising the Tory government, aren't they? Which we could do quite happily for things they've actually done. But the idea we have Dickensian poverty is a blatant lie. I mean, maybe we should refer this to their Verify uh, department at the BBC to verify whether this is true or not. Yeah, I mean, look, there was, as you say, there was no National Health Service back in those days. Yep. Uh, no universal education, no system of welfare. I mean, you know, life expectancy was 40 years of age. Cities yeah. then were sort of hellish and disease ridden. We've got no equivalent of the Victorian slums, you know, which would look, make the worst block of flats today look like a palace. You know, these were places with no indoor plumbing, people drinking dirty water from streams that had sewage in them and rubbish. Cholera and tuberculosis were rife everywhere. Yeah. Ten people in a family living in one room. You had the workhouses, I mean, terrible places. Debtors' prisons, where you would see normal law-abiding people being sent to prison for being unable to, to pay their um, creditors. Brutal orphanages as well. And the working conditions in the, in the workhouses, child labor, 15-hour days, malnutrition. I mean, one of the big differences, of course, is the working classes in the Victorian era were extremely thin and malnourished, whereas today, of course, obesity is the biggest issue amongst yeah. the very, people. Very, very fair point. Do you think the person who wrote this and approved it, this wouldn't have gone just through one person. We know they'd have done everything by committee at the BBC because we're paying their wages. Um, are they just stupid and ignorant, never actually, don't, didn't actually bother studying history even to... I mean, I, I'm gonna, I wasn't even going to say GCSE level. I mean, to primary school level, you'd know a load of this stuff. Do, or do you, do you think that, that they, you know, they actually think they can get away with this stuff and, and it's just a, is it just a sort of a, a virtue signal to their other friends at work and, and the, the rest of that world, the media world that, oh, look, look, I've got to dig into the, to, to modern day Britain? Yeah, I think there's a combination of things going on here. I think there's historical ignorance, uh, but it's also combined with this uh, pernicious ideology uh, of, of progressive ideology and also with a, 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 a nihilistic culture of self-loathing that has pervaded all of our institutions, not just the BBC. We see it with the National Trust, with the British Library. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's a fact of life now that our institutions constantly seek to undermine. And they don't compare us with other places because, yeah. you know, this all plays into the BBC's love of uh, you know, Plague Island. Brexit Britain yes. is uniquely miserable, one of the worst places in the world. Well, as we know, you know, there are three and a half million people in France uh, going to food banks. Germany's had an explosion of, of food banks in, in recent years. You know, the West in, as a whole isn't going through a golden era. I mean, we all can look wistfully back to life pre-2008, but it's always the BBC and the Guardian who constantly want to drag Britain down exclusively. Yeah, it is absolutely bizarre, is. isn't it? It's the very strangest thing. Rafe Hadel Manku, thank you so much for joining us. Final quick word on that was Sam Armstrong. Yeah, nothing new there. George Orwell said it was a peculiar feature of the British intelligentsia and elite that they love doing nothing more than tearing down their own country. Nowhere else on earth does no, that happen. And again, even like economically, anything that happens badly is due to Brexit or something, or the Tories, even if the same thing is happening worse in another country that is still part of the EU and has a left-wing government. It's all your fault, Julia. Yeah, OK, fair enough. I'll take the blame, I'll take the blame. Oh, I wish I was in charge. Come the revolution, folks. Coming up after the break, more on Lee Anderson's defection to reform the UK and the Princess of Wales apologising over the manipulated official royal photograph. I'm Julia hartley Brook. you're with Talk TV. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaking. Now, you ain't going to have an eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Oi, oi, right, oi, oi, treat go. When JK Rowling says, let's just be honest, it's all she's saying, let's just be honest. When a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, not a woman, trans woman. It's a man.
Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting the badge. Quite um, right too. Yay. Quite Yay. right too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia, reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram, as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, missing. There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth plinth. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I know it's I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. So he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, a trans sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So anyway, <laughs> just, 40 yeah. minutes, 40... Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist did to, fail her. Yeah, we're we're supposed to it was another era. She was 22. Mm. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. On TV, on radio, and on your smartphone, this is Talk TV. Good afternoon. Welcome back to the show. I'm Julia Hartley Brewer. You're with Talk TV. We're on TV, on radio, online, and on your smart speaker. And I'm with you live from 10 until 1. Coming up in this hour, former Tory Deputy Chairman Lee Anderson has defected to Reform UK, declaring, I want my country back. And the Princess of Wales has personally apologised for confusion, she says, over the family photograph issued by Kensington Palace, saying, like many amateur photographers, I do occasionally experiment with editing. This after major picture agencies around the world called at the photograph saying it had been manipulated. And the police are facing, quite rightly, a backlash after a counter-protester at the pro-Palestinian march in London at the weekend was arrested by the Met, but he was carrying a sign saying Hamas are terrorists when men who ripped his sign from him were not arrested. He was later released. We're going to talk to the man who filmed that exchange. First, though, let's get the latest news headlines with Elliot Gopkin. Good afternoon. Confusion remains over Kate Middleton's Mother's Day photograph, despite an apology by the princess. Kate's issued a statement saying she's sorry, but that, like any amateur photographer, she often experiments with editing. The image had been removed from five major press agencies after it was thought to have been doctored. Royal biographer Angela Levin says Kate's apology only goes so far. What the um, picture still doesn't answer is why there's no wedding or engagement ring on her finger. Did she wipe that out? Um, can't understand that. And also the tree in the background is one that doesn't have leaves at this time of year. So I'm not quite sure about that one either. Nor am I sure that Prince William took the photograph. He's not a photographer, she is the expert. Lee Anderson has defected from the Conservative Party, joining Reform UK. The former deputy chairman of the Tories was suspended from the party after he refused to apologise for remarks about London Mayor Sadiq Khan, which sparked an Islamophobia row. Speaking at a Reform press conference, Lee Anderson says that as an MP, he should be able to speak his mind. 
It's not controversial to be concerned about illegal immigration. It's not controversial to be concerned about legal migration. It's not controversial to be, you know, worried, concerned about the Metropolitan Police and a failing London Mayor and the hate marchers, the street crime and the shoplifters literally getting away with ruining businesses on a daily basis. At least 50 people have been injured after an incident on an inbound flight at Auckland International Airport. It's reported the LATAM Airlines flight from Sydney suffered a technical problem causing a strong movement. One person is said to be in a serious condition, 13 were taken to hospital. The mother of murdered teenager Brianna Jai has met with the family of one of her killers. Esther Jai says she had a positive and respectful meeting with the mother and uncle of Scarlett Jenkinson, who was behind a plot to kill her daughter. The 16-year-old was stabbed 28 times with a hunting knife in Cheshire last year, but her mum believes it was important to speak with her killer's family. A 39-year-old man will today become the first person to be convicted of sending an explicit photograph without permission, known as cyber flashing. Nicholas Hawkes sent images to a woman and a 15-year-old girl. The maximum sentence is two years. The government is trying to clamp down on a range of online abuse, trolling and predatory behaviour as part of its Online Safety Act. And Oppenheimer has swept the board at this year's Oscars, winning seven awards. The film took all the top prizes, including Best Actor, Best Director and Best Picture. While presenting the biggest award of the night, Godfather star Al Pacino jumped the gun by announcing the winner before listing the nominees. Killian Murphy, who won Best Actor, paid tribute to the director, Christopher Nolan. It's very, very special. You know, I, I, it's, we've been working together for 20 years. I think he's the perfect director. He's an extraordinary writer, he's an extraordinary producer, he's extraordinary visually, extraordinary director of actors. He presents this film like no one else does in the world. And I just can't believe my look. You know, I did a screen test for him when I was a kid and I thought that would be it. That's the latest. Now time for a look at today's weather with Nazanin Gaffer. Times Radio sponsors Talk TV Weather. Hello, lots of cloud out there for this afternoon. A bit of brightness uh, here and there, though, as you can see in the earlier satellite and radar picture across southwestern areas, and that's where we're likely to see the highest temperatures. Everywhere else, though, under the cloud with the easterly winds feeding through that cloud as well, it is going to be feeling pretty cool, particularly around the east coast, and there will be bits and pieces of drizzle, as well as light rain clearing from Northern Ireland, heading to western Scotland by the end of today. So, as mentioned, the highest temperatures across parts of the southwest in the sunshine, up to around 12 degrees Celsius, but cool under the cloudier zones, particularly near the brunt of those easterly winds in the east, only up into the high single figures. Now, as we head into tonight, we start to see a bit of a change. We see an uh, area of rain spreading across Ireland and Northern Ireland with brisk winds heading to western parts of Britain by dawn. Now, that's going to start developing through a uh, southwesterly airflow, but it still remains cool across northern and eastern areas. But for central and eastern parts of the UK, it's generally going to be dry, but not for long. Through tomorrow, that rain across the west will be spreading eastwards with heavy downpours expected. Ahead of that, it will be a misty and murky start to the day as well. And then another batch of wet weather feeds in across Ireland and Northern Ireland before the end of the day. So it's generally looking rather cloudy and wet tomorrow, but milder from the west. Times Radio sponsors Talk TV Weather. Good afternoon. Welcome back to the show. I'm Julia hartley Brewer. You are with Talk TV. Still with me in the studio is commentator Sam Armstrong. And um, there's no doubt at all, Lee Anderson um, de re basically defecting to the, uh, from the Tories to Reform UK, even though, of course, he's sitting currently uh, in the House of Commons as an independent after having losing the whip over his comments about Sadiq Khan and indeed others and saying the London Sadiq Khan and uh, everyone seems to forget, Keir Starmer are controlled by Islamists. He has gone over to Reform UK Big, big headache for Rishi Sunak, particularly after the budget last week when a yeah, bit of a damn squib didn't change the polls at all. No one thinks it, it thinks that, that will actually do so. Um, how big a, a headache do you think it is, though, for Rishi Sunak to lose Lee Anderson? Or will there be 
slight relief. Well, look, political campaigns, and that's, make no mistake, where we are now, campaigns, are measured in weeks. And Rishi Sunak has about 25 to 30 weeks in order to turn around his prospects. And he needs to double, at least double, the number of people in this country that support him. And in the last two weeks, he's had the budget, meant to be one of his last big fixed pieces of, of football. That is the, the budget is your equivalent of a penalty, a free kick on the edge of the box. If you can make the most of a set piece, you're going to be all right. If you can't, you're in trouble. And he blew it. He's now lost this entire week is going to be about him. Lee Anderson, and yeah. Well, indeed, our, our show today, exactly. We have lots of things we want to talk about. It's... It's just, not about the extremism story. It's not about... It's all about Lee Anderson. Just around the corner, the local elections, which are going to be a bloodbath yes. for the Conservative Party. Increasingly, the road is running out. That is the message that I think comes through more than anything Do you think today. there's going to be a Tory leadership, another attempt to act to ask him, another election? Because if we, did, we never know. There could be, you know, three no-confidence letters behind handed into the National 22 Committee. There could be 53. We don't know. We only know at the point when it actually reaches the, the final amount. I don't know. You probably, you probably know what number that is, do you? What number? No, the number that it has to reach. Uh, it, it has to reach 53. Has to reach, did that, 53, there you are. I plucked that from thinner. But 53. So once it reaches 50, then Sir Graham Brady, if that happens, goes to number 10 and says there is a no confidence vote in. Here's what I do know. But no one knows until There that are point. a series of cabinet ministers that are on none too subtle manoeuvres right now. They yeah. include Penny Morden. They include Kemi Badenoch. They include Grant Shapps and a number of others. But if I'm Penny Morden or Grant Shapps and my seats are the kind of seats that this Prime Minister is about to lose, and I'm thinking, hmm, I can have a leadership tilt before the election or I can have one after the election, but I won't be an MP after the, the election. That's I it. think the likes of Penny Morden might themselves now, in fact, I'd be prepared to bet a lot of money, will be seriously considering whether to make a move against the Prime Minister in a matter of days or weeks. Watch this space, folks. We'll, we'll, we'll hold you to that. Very interesting. Uh, hey, Penny Morton, if you want to come on and discuss it, do come on at any time. Right. Uh, today we have been asking you about Sir Lee Anderson as a former Tory chairman, deputy chairman, sorry, defecting to Reform UK. What is your reaction? So far, you've been pretty happy about it. Give us a call on 0344 499 1000, text 8722, get in touch on X at Talk TV. Calls are charged at the national rate. Text costs one standard network rate message. Uh, moving on now briefly, though, uh, we're going to talk about uh, that photograph issued by Kensington Palace yesterday. And finally, some 12 hours after pretty much every major news and picture agency in the world decided to pull that photo uh, from availability, claiming that it had been manipulated. The Princess of Wales has personally apologised for confusion over that family photograph, saying, like many amateur photographers, I do occasionally experiment with editing. Well, let's talk about this right now with our royal correspondent, Rupert Bell. Uh, good afternoon to you, Rupert. Good afternoon, Julia. Thank you very much. I know you're talking just from your, with your other hat on, really, as not just our Royal Correspondent, but you also do a lot of racing uh, correspondent work for Talk Sports. So you're at Cheltenham. I'll be there on Friday, uh, looking forward, getting my hat and my boots ready. I'll be there joining you. Um, what did you make, first of all, when you saw that photo? Not only, I mean, you know, no wedding ring, very unusual, uh, you know, given all these rumours that are swirling around, which we won't do any, give any credence to, but no wedding ring, huge number of photo shopping errors. I mean, some really blatant ones, zip on her jacket, a, a, a sleeve of, the, of Charlotte, a, a step behind. I mean, there are people question whether the tree would be in bloom at this time of year, the kind of tree is behind them. Big question marks. What did you make of it when you saw it? The first thing that I actually thought about was the trees in the background. Uh, when it came up what, yesterday morning, I suddenly looked at it and went, oh, uh, that looks a bit out of place and, uh, for the time of year. Uh, but then I read the article and then I sort of took it on face value initially saying, well, it was photographed last week. And so you basically have to sort of accept it. But clearly now, um, it when you see respected news agencies pulling the plug on it because it uh, has been photoshopped, um, I, I want to know is how the heck did it actually get past Go to be put out on social media? Who signed off on it? That's where, and to create all the other questions and unanswered questions as a result of this, because even though she said an amateur photographer does, I like to uh, play with my photographs and do little things with them, Still, the fact that it was able to be published 
just seems to me to be a serious mistake within the yeah. Kensington Palace but, press but, office. Ah, but also, crucially, once there was this mistake, once this got out, 10 p.m. last night, I mean, lots of people were querying it all day. Mm. People like me were saying, oh, hey, bad PR move. If you're trying to quell a load of rumours, Mother's Day with your three kids, have your, have your wedding ring on, love. I mean, this is really basic PR yeah. stuff. Kate, Kate does detail. We know there's all this stuff whenever there's a major event where wearing the earrings that were given to Queen Victoria by the whatever emir of the country. Mm. They do detail. They're surrounded by people who are paid a fortune to do detail. Now, here's the thing. It took more than 12 hours for Kensington Palace, no doubt inundated with calls from royal correspondents and news editors and probably editors as well from national newspapers saying, what is going on with this photograph? 12 and a half hours to get that statement out. Now, crucial thing about that statement, as a lawyer got in touch and told me that no point in this statement does the Princess of Wales say that she edited that photo. She says, like many amateur photographers, I do occasionally experiment with editing. She does... Talks about the confusion the family photograph showed. She doesn't say that she edited the photo. Well, this is where we all end up with a series of people head scratching moments. What is going on? That this was even able to get out there and create more questions. We want to know, and everyone's been speculating. We've seen all the chitter chatter on social media, and some of it is quite bizarre and, and completely out of kilter. But when we've been obviously hearing about the king and his cancer, and really Prince William is absolutely right. He wants to protect his wife from all the speculation about her health. But this has only just created even more spotlight. Today is supposed to be the uh, Commonwealth service at the Westminster Abbey, where the Prince of Wales and the Queen will be there. Yet all the focus now is on this photograph and, and what is really going on. I'm less exercised by the wedding ring because I'm going to say, if she is ill, do you wear jewellery? That's the thing. If oh, you, if God. You're I mean, I'm sorry. I, no, I'm I, sorry. I'm no, just, big well, engagement ring, maybe. Most women, I'm sorry, most women wear their wedding okay. rings. I've never seen a photograph of her without her wedding ring on. Well, There's a load I, of exactly, rumours about well, your I, marriage and you don't wear your wedding ring. Come on. Well, uh, this again is where you've all the various bits of speculation that is out there looking at the whole thing. And this is the, the sad fact. Now, she's trying to say that it was Mother's Day. They're used to putting, normally put out photographs on Mother's Day. Uh, but this one has really gone wrong in all sorts yeah. of reasons. Now, off the back of her being ill and obviously being not seen since Christmas. And now this, when we do see an official photograph, it is one that has been photoshopped. And that clearly, for the royal family, is not a good look. It's a serious PR gap. It really is, isn't it? Thank you very much for joining us. Rupert Bell there, enjoy the uh, horse racing there at Cheltenham. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, just a final quick word on that uh, with Sam Armstrong, who's with us all morning. Or afternoon? <laughs> uh, well, yes, uh, Rupert calls it absolutely right. This is such an unforced error. You, you know, Kate's into her tennis and she knows that forced errors happen a lot in tennis. Yeah. But whether you win or whether you lose depends on whether you make these unforced, completely and utterly unnecessary errors. Yeah, well, it just shows a level of incompetence among the staff. Again, they're all very highly paid and, and, and often highly skilled. They come often from business or, or government and, and elsewhere. Uh, moving on, though, let's talk about, yeah, rather more important things uh, than what kind of photograph is put out by Kensington Palace on Mother's Day. And I do agree uh, that in one level, that's not important. It is about an issue of trust uh, in terms of statements that are made by them. But what about your trust that you can protest peacefully on the streets of the country where you live. Well, that is the right, we're told, for the pro-Palestinian protesters. Every two weeks on Saturday afternoons in London and elsewhere, they are on the streets with their protests. Now, many of us have got quite a lot of issues with a lot of those chants and a lot of the placards and things that are carried by those people, wondering why the police don't get involved, despite the fact there are dozens and dozens, hundreds of police involved uh, with policing those protests. Yesterday, though, we got an interesting backlash after the police faced a backlash for a counter-protester at the pro-Palestinian march on Saturday when he was arrested for carrying a sign which said, excuse the grammar, Hamas is terrorist, meaning, of course, Hamas are terrorists, when other men who ripped his sign from him in anger were not arrested. He was later released. But I'm joined now by the man who filmed his arrest, and that is political YouTuber Mahir Tuzi, who joins us now. Good morning to you, Mahir. 
Good afternoon, Julia. Thank, thank you, you so much uh, well, for having me. Well, thank you very me. much for joining us. Now, um, you were out on covering this march. You, you know, been covering it on your your YouTube uh, Two Z TV uh, station. Um, it is extraordinary. This man, he's been arrested before. He's been on these marches before. He was standing. I mean, the people who are watching will be able to see, but people may have heard of this already. This is Niak Gobani. He's an, uh, actually he's originally from Iran, living in this country. Um, He's standing holding a sign, perfectly peacefully. He's just holding the sign up. He's not berating anybody. He's not throwing at people. He's not, he's not, he's simply holding a sign up. He's making a statement, which is, I believe, pretty accurately, the government, the official policy of this country, which is that the, the Hamas are a prescribed, and many other countries, a prescribed terrorist organization. He faced quite a lot of anger in the crowd even before it was ripped off him, wasn't he? Yes, there, there are two issues here. One is um, the well, second one I'll, I'll focus on, which is the actual social media team of the Met. Uh, but the, the first one is actually the officers on the ground seem to be all over the place. Uh, luckily, I was there obviously to uh, do a live stream, report it, and I accidentally saw someone being dragged. So I thought, OK, I assume it's going to be a protester. But the problem with that was, uh, as you already explained, uh, he was just standing there with a sign saying Hamas are terrorists and uh, wasn't actually starting a fight. A couple of other actual protesters decided to basically start a fight with him. And he still wasn't really defending himself. He was still being patient. The police ran in, dragged him away. But the problem with that is that the police immediately responded, and also on social media, saying, um, well, on the one hand, we saved him from himself because breach of peace. But also, he, he was arrested for assault. And that also means that the social media team that posted this, they didn't actually get the proper facts because no one actually complained about him assaulting anybody else anyway. We already know all this. The problem I have is on the ground, the police officer, there were so many officers there, right there standing next to him. There were all these cameras, live cameras that they have. Somehow they are as bad as the referees in the Premier League with VAR. They still can't see exactly what's going on. So yeah. the benefit of the doubt, they're incompetent. Otherwise, I'm not really sure what, what's going on with some of the Yeah, officers. that's a very, very good point. Like you put out a very long video, and, and, the, and this man also tweeted it out. Now, um, we've got a little clip of a video of asking, you know, why, why had he been arrested and what he had been told he, why he'd been arrested, surrounded by police officers. Let's have a watch and a listen of that clip. Sir, sir, why have you been arrested? Because I write it down, Hamas is terrorist organisation. That's it, that's it. What, what did it? Love, what did it say on your sign? What did it say Hamas on your sign? Is terrorist. Uh, Hamas is terrorist. So he 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 was saying yeah, that's what he you know he'd been arrested for this, and mm. it was extraordinary that you have got video footage, I believe, which you showed the police and put out online, where you know these men very angrily you know grabbed the sign from him. Um, the police later, I think, screwed up the sign. Now, he had every right to stand there with the sign. Doesn't matter if I mean I don't like a lot of the things that people are, you know, have on their their placards. It doesn't give me the right to go and rip them up. He wasn't he wasn't disrupting the march. He wasn't being aggressive. He wasn't intimidating people. He had the right to be there. And by the way, the people on the march who claim to care about civilians in in Gaza should also want to campaign against Hamas because they are the biggest problem that the Palestinian people in Gaza have. But I mean. Where does this leave us? Because once again, we have two-tier policing that you can get away with mm. shouting from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, which basically calls the eradication of Israel and the removal of every Jew uh, from their, you know, the, the, the now only Jewish homeland. Uh, you, you can shout that. That's fine, <laughs> apparently. Um, but you can't hold up a sign that says Hamas are terrorists. I mean, isn't it interesting, as you said, um, that the protesters, a lot of them who claim to be pro-civilians, Palestinians, uh, why are they so sensitive when someone says Hamas are terrorists? It's not the first time this has happened. Second issue, you mentioned the two-tier policing. It's actually, it's multiple layers, and there's, some of them go rogue. Uh, during the same uh, live show that I did, live report on TCTV, um, there, there was the police line, and obviously the, the, the counter-protesters and the protesters, and we already arranged it, and I was there with a couple of other friends with press passes, and the couple of police officers stopped me from actually going through and actually reporting it. And I had to go around and deal with a couple of other police officers and they were nice. It's, it's like, oh, what, when what we say about that- What grounds did the anything. police officer try to stop you? On what grounds? No, no ground, they didn't explain anything. They also questioned me why I'm actually reporting the arrests. Why are you filming the arrests? I'm like, well, it's, it's, it's my job. That's this whole point. And you guys are also filming it. It's like they're afraid of the evidence. Actually, that was an interesting point because uh, in, the, in the video that we have, um, the, the police officer, one of them actually grabs the sign and he then takes it to the van. And then at the end, uh, the police uh, responded saying, we don't even know about this stuff. We don't know where it is. You took it. <laughs>
Wow. I mean, that, that is quite something, isn't it? And again, thankfully, people like you are out there uh, doing that job and filming that. And again, the police protest, everybody who is law abiding and there to do a job should be pleased that as many people as possible are filming things from every possible angle and perspective, because that's how we get to the truth. Uh, I do just find it absolutely extraordinary this is happening. Can I ask you about, um, you know, where we are on these demonstrations, though? Because they've been called hate marches by the likes of Suella Braverman. And again, it's interesting to see, although she was basically, to all intents and purposes, sort of sat really really, for saying that. I know it was a week or so later, but that's really what happened uh, as Home Secretary. Yeah. And then we had the Prime Minister outside Downing Street a couple of weekends ago, basically, you know, talking about how terrible these marches were, really. This week, we've got Michael Gove, the Housing and Levelling Up Secretary. He's going to be making an announcement about this new definition of extremism. Um, mm. We've already had three former Home Secretaries and various sort of anti-extremist campaigners saying, like, oh, we're very worried about this new definition. Um, what, what are your yeah. concerns? Well, the concerns I have is that uh, well, we live in a country which is a centralized country in terms of central government leading things, unlike America and other places, which means that we actually need the governments of, of the day to actually lead. Uh, and the problem with that is that you mentioned a couple of examples. The prime minister coming out last week uh, because he, they probably had a political meeting in Downing Street, thought it's probably a good idea to mention uh, the rise of obviously uh, anti-Semitism and Islamism. But then clearly they also had the same meeting. Uh, somebody else in the uh, meeting probably mentioned, OK, you might have to mention the far right. And that yeah. creates the inconsistency. It's not necessarily that, oh, don't mention the far right or don't mention this or that. Focus on the real issue and then you can focus on that separately as well. Same th applies to the, the Michael Gove's uh, the, the new definition of uh, extremism. The worry that we have is that in the name of them trying to basically say we're uh, tackling uh, the Islamism, they might also come out, for example, to tackle me if I say something controversial on Twitter, which is still legal, mm -hmm. but harmful, apparently. So yeah. how do we, is um, it going to be extremist if, if me, and if I go on, I don't know, on, on Twitter and say, uh, Islamism is bad, we have to, I don't know, be radical about uh, the Islamist migrants. Uh, that could be extremist as a rhetoric, right? Well, I mean, that would always pro already probably count as hate speech. And we have, we've seen these you new know, laws being brought in in Scotland as well, even in your own home, uh, things that you say. I find this very, very concerning because I, I you know, having, having been reported to a US counterterrorism unit as a, a known vaccine sceptic, when I wasn't a vaccine sceptic at all, and even <laughs> if I had been, I still don't see it's appropriate for the British government to give my information to a US counterterrorism unit uh, during lockdowns. Um, I don't, I no longer trust the government on any of these things. I don't want governments deciding what they think is hate speech or not. I don't even know why we have to have uh, any hate hate crimes at all. I think we should have, have you assaulted someone, threatened someone physically, called on other people, incited them to threaten? That's all we need. I don't think anything else is relevant. This is, this is thought police stuff. Yes, it's a thought police, sir, but at the same time, while, as I said, we are centralised, so central government could actually have blanket policies, the other problem we have is that inside the system, whether it's the NHS or the police, you, you have something called the postcode lottery or just chance. So I got lucky. I had to deal with a different police officer who was nice to me. The other one was bad. Yeah. If you're lucky to live in an area with a good NHS trust, you'll be fine, but not the bad ones. It, 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 it's not consistent. Even for a centralised government and blanket policies, it really depends what sort of police officer is dealing with your mean tweets, for example. Some of them might be okay with it. That's, that is the big concern, isn't it? Arbitrary policing and justice is not is not justice at all. Maya Tuzi, a political YouTuber, really appreciate that. Thank you very much for sharing those, those pictures. Uh, let's get the thoughts of commentator Sam Armstrong. This is a serious worry, isn't it? We've seen again and again, particularly with these protests, uh, every two weeks since October the 7th uh, by people supposedly who care about pro uh, Palestinian civilians but apparently are quite happy for Hamas terrorists to still be in charge of them and use them as human shields. Never understood that bit. But again and again, we've seen people who, like someone who's, you know, holding an Israeli flag, they'll be bundled away by the police as opposed to the people who are haranguing them. And we see it now, a man holding up a sign which is perfectly legitimate. Hamas is terrorist. Hamas are terrorists. Yeah, I just watched that footage and there were 20 police officers dragging the guy away. I mean, good luck getting one of those 20 if your house is burgled to come along. Yeah. But look, right, you can get 20 police officers to arrest a peaceful protester for being assaulted. OK, well, let's see those 20 police officers spend the next week until the protests come back again and terrorise some more Jews on the streets of London. Let's see them spend this week tracking down each yeah. and every one of those violent thugs that hit him in the We've face. We've got pictures of them on screen right now. We know exactly who they are. They won't. The police don't care. They see it as their job to 
lower the tensions. They see it as their job as yeah. to, to regulate the situation. You know what would lower the tensions right. if we didn't have these marches? Now, I get I people was right to march, but if the march is organised by people with, with links to a terrorist group like Hamas, which they are, um, and, and people are people are not happily welcoming people with signs saying Hamas are terrorists. I, I'm kind of of the view that the next one, all right-thinking people in the capital city should all turn up. We all just stand there with those signs saying Hamas are terrorists. If you've got a problem with that sign, you don't really care about the Palestinian people and you're supporting Hamas. I think at that point we'd know whether it was a hate march or not. We've now reached the point where dozens, dozens of people on these marches have been arrested for terrorist offences. Yeah. Now, look, I'm an open, pretty tolerant guy, but can we just set a limit, right? Can we agree amongst ourselves that if you reach 10 people on your regular protests being arrested and in many cases yeah. convicted of committing terrorism, yeah. that we're going to say you're no longer allowed just to for organize just six marches. weeks yeah. ban or something? May, maybe also the people on those marches might want to question the company they are keeping. Because I know I know if some, you know, if we were on a march and people arrested, people would certainly be telling us exactly the same. But there we are. Thank you very much. More from Sam Armstrong. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure one person who would definitely have views on all this is Lee Anderson. And he, of course, is back in the news today. The Tory deputy chairman has defected to uh, Reform UK. He uh, left, of course, uh, the Tory party whip after being suspended for comments he'd made about Islamists having control of London. Sadiq Khan and Keir Starmer. I want to know what your reaction is. You can call us on 0344 499 1000, text 8722. Or get in touch on X at Talk TV. Simon has done just that and says, good for Lee. We need a proper Conservative Party. Oh, obviously, good for Lee, but then leaving the Conservative Party. Is that going to make the Conservative Party more representative of you? Sue says, great news, although they need a few more to follow him. And Susie says, Lee Anderson stands for the principles that the Tories over the years have abandoned. Uh, you also got your calls coming in as well. Let's go to Joshua, who is in Colchester. Hello, Joshua. Hello. Hello. What do you want Hi, to Julia. say about this, then? <clears throat> OK, um, thanks for this um, opportunity. Um, what, what I'm going to say is that I, I think I'm observing something very, very disturbing um, in the country. Uh, this morning, um, I just read that from the BBC website that 170 million have been um, pounds have been um, designated to protect mosques and Muslim schools and, uh, and from hate attacks and the rest of it. No problem with protection and the rest of it. But the point is that <clears throat> I see a narrative which is changing. The discourse of this country is changing. Everything is now pandering towards Islamists. Everything is just Muslim. Everything is just Muslim. Well, again, I'd like to clarify, though, budget. Muslims, Islamists are different things. Muslims are our fellow citizens living no, Islamists, here. Yes. Islamists, Islamists are, yes. you know, so, is, is a political so, ideology. So, so. Yes, so 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 it is it is that it is it is that which is now capturing the attention. You see, so we my my, my point my point here is that we've seen a lot of things happening um, in the marches, and the the yeah. person who was saying something which is obvious has been arrested, and the others have not been arrested. So I mean, can I can I, I, can I bring that back that, to Lee Anderson though? So you, I know you yes, you actually called yes. up to talk about Lee Anderson. Yes. So, How does so, that relate? So, yes, Lee Anderson. Yes, he, this relates exactly to it. So this is almost like a capture theory. So he, he the is saying that um, he's saying that he thinks Islamists are taking over, uh, say, London, for instance, and we think it's not. Other people think it's not true. But what is happening now almost explains what he's saying in in, in real world. I mean, we are doing everything to pander to what what he's saying. And okay. so he well, thank you. True. Thank you, Joshua. I really appreciate that. That's Joshua there calling in from Colchester. Thank you. Uh, coming up after the break, more on Lee Anderson defecting to Reform UK. We'll talk to our uh, reporter, Isabel Oakshot, who was at that press conference this morning. I'm Julia Hartley-Brewer and you're with Talk TV. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaking. Now, you ain't Talk. gonna happen and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. All right, oi, oi, treat girl. When JK Rowling says, let's just be honest, it's all she's saying, let's just be honest. When a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman, trans woman. It's a man.
Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right too. Yay. Quite right Yay. too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm, I'm a huge hit on Instagram, as you probably know. What are you doing? I was just about to do it. Ooh, Ooh. It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, listen. <laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth plinth. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I, know it's, I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue, then. <laughs> wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, <laughs> a trans sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So anyway, <laughs> just, yeah. minute, four... Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, t when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist we're, we're, we're did fail her. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Era. She was 22, mm. we're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Welcome back to the show. I'm Julia huntley Brew, and you're with Talk TV. Now, former Tory deputy chairman Lee Anderson has defected to Reform UK, where he has become the party's first ever MP. Will he be the last? Uh, we shall look forward to finding out. A lot of you have been getting in touch, having your say about what uh, Lee Anderson has done, choosing to defect from the Conservative Party, where, of course, he was no longer an MP for them, no longer deputy chairman of the party. He resigned to, from that role so he could vote on the Rwanda bill as he chose. And, of course, uh, he lost at the Tory whip a few weeks ago after his comments about Sadiq Khan and indeed Kirsten as well, but he was accused of Islamophobia, something the party and he, of course, quite rightly have denied. Um, unfortunately, we can't get a, a, a link to our guest we're supposed to talk to, Isabel Oakeshott, but uh, still with me in the studio is Sam Armstrong. Now, I'm, I'm going to play a clip for people who are just tuning in of what Lee Anderson had to say at the press conference. We knew in advance as a press conference told it was a major announcement by Reform UK. So at uh, half ten this morning, Richard Tice, the leader of Reform UK, made the announcement that Lee Anderson was joining the party. Here is what Lee Anderson had to say in his first speech. It's not controversial to be concerned about illegal immigration. It's not controversial to be concerned about legal migration. It's not controversial to be, you know, worried, concerned about the Metropolitan Police and a failing London Mayor and the hate marchers, the street crime and the shoplifters literally getting away with ruining businesses on a daily basis. Now, are there many people, I would say, by the way, on both the left and right of the political spectrum, Sam Armstrong, who would have any issue with anything he said that this is kind of bread and butter politics stuff, isn't it? Yeah, and to me, all it does is underline the disconnect between the type of nonsense that gets witted on about all yeah. day long in Westminster. I know, I've worked there my entire <laughs> career, I've fed up to the teeth with it, and the kind of conversations that ordinary people are having. And ordinary people, I don't think this is a criticism in the slightest, 
talk in the same kind of language, in the same type of terms as um, Lee Anderson. What they don't do is focus group everything they say, yes. hyper polish their answers, never respond to a question, always be a bit standoffish, fake, over polished. And there is a real opportunity for the likes of Lee Anderson to exploit that gap that politicians deliberately are leaving in our political debate. And, you know, I've got, been around a lot in politics. I, in fact, started my career uh, working for the Conservative Party in its efforts to resist UKIP before the 2015 election. Yeah. This is bigger than that was. And by the way, they held on, UKIP held on to a seat in 2015. There were polls, internal polls, I can reveal the secrets now, that said the Tory party were likely to lose 20 seats to UKIP. Yeah. I can see similar things happening. Uh I mean, and the key thing there is we remember the reason... I, I'm always fascinated, bearing in mind, of course, Nigel Farage was, you know, leader of UKIP and, of course, the Brexit party and, and Reform UK is led by Richard Tice. But that's because, you know, I suppose really because really argue Nigel Farage has gone, well, lots of talk of him possibly coming back one day um, if, if, he, if he feels in some sort of campaigning role. But the, thing, the key thing there was there was a really, really clear um, message about this, which was that, you know, if you, people were done, basically moving to UKIP so much so that David Cameron, as Tory leader, was basically required, was forced to promise an EU referendum he didn't want to give. He thought he'd win it, but he had to well promise that. And, and again, when we saw we, uh, Brexit Party standing down pretty much half the candidates, 300 candidates, in 2019 because the view was they'd done a deal you know what, Boris Johnson is the only person who can actually deliver Brexit to get Brexit through and not risk a Labour government under Jeremy Corbyn and indeed the likes of Keir Starmer, now Labour leader, massively campaigning to try and stop that Brexit vote going through. That was what was necessary. We've been told again and again by Richard Tice, the leader of Reform UK, there will not be another deal. We've been sold down the river on Brexit. They didn't deliver what they promised to do. We won't make that mistake again. Do you think, do you think he will stick by that? I do, and absent those two, uh, absent that big deal, there are two things that the Tory party had in 2015 that it doesn't have now. One, the ability to make an EU referendum style promise to the British public. Is Rishi Sunak gonna turn around and say, do you know what, we're gonna hold a referendum on whether we stay part of the European Court of Human Rights, whether we regain the right to deport criminals back to their country? And secondly, say what you like about David Cameron, and I've got plenty to say about that man, let me assure you, but the guy could campaign. He walked into a room and it was electric. He had charisma, he had power, he had the ability to communicate with the public. Rishi Sunak ain't got none of that. Look at the yeah. photos of him in cabinet now that put out by number 10 themselves with David Cameron and Rishi Sunak. It looks like David Cameron's I mean, the prime yeah, minister. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Some people, again, you look at, I mean, again, you know, the likes of Tony Blair, David Cameron, they're really good communicators. But a lot of people might not like them, might not vote for them, but they were able to command authority. And there is that feeling that Rishi Snack does not have that authority in his party. Look, look, you work with a lot of Tory MPs who have been accused of basically plotting and undermining the Prime Minister. I think a lot of them would simply say, we're trying to help the Prime Minister by having some policies that the sort of things that actually would get us re-elected, at the very least, not completely annihilated at the next general election. But... Crucially here is that the policies that you, I mean, you, you're, the MPs you've been working with, new Conservatives and lots of other different groups, and if you, I always think, you know, you've got like the ERG, European Group of you know, Skeptics, the Net Zero Scrutiny Group and all of those people. Actually, these are all, these are all MPs who are basically pushing the policies that most Tories thought the Conservatives stood for and that they were going to get if they elected the Tories. Now, yes, we have the small matter of, of, a, of, of a COVID pandemic uh, very soon, only months after the, the government got elected in 2019. We had lockdowns and things. Um, you know, things have changed as a result of that massively, economically, socially, in, in so many different ways. But, but fundamentally, this idea that, like, that what the sort of Reform UK are talking about, what many of these Tory MPs who are criticising the Prime Minister are talking about, is in some way extreme right-wing stuff as opposed to bread and butter conservative issues, I think is quite bizarre. Yeah, put aside for a moment the economics. You can say that that's down to COVID, the money isn't there that we, that we thought it was. Just focus on the immigration issue. In 2019, immigration was at 229,000. It was more than double what the Tories promised it was yeah. going to be. But they then promised that they were going to reduce it. For 229,000, they were going to bring it down. Instead, the Tory party have tripled immigration, net migration. Yeah. 700,000 people came into the country last year and it's still going up every year. 
There is a litany of broken promises that lie behind the journey between Lee Anderson, the former Labour councillor, being elected as a Tory MP in Ashfield, mm. to him defecting today, and I fear that seat going back squarely into the red camp. And I worry that that will, and maybe I'm wrong, maybe Lee Anderson will win it as reform, but I fear that that's going to defect back to, to Labour. Now, I can tell you for free that the people of Ashfield share the values of Keir Starmer <laughs> no more than they do share the values of, yeah. of Rishi Sunak. Yeah. But that's the risk of today's decision. It's going to be fascinating to watch. Sam Armstrong, thank you. Well, let's get your thoughts as well. As the former Tory Deputy Chairman Lee Anderson has defected to Reform UK, what is your reaction? You can give us a call 0 1000 Get in touch on text and on Twitter. Martin says, great for Lee. He speaks for millions up and down the country. Bernie says, Reform was getting my vote anyway. Now I hope many others will follow. And Gary says, excellent news. He's done nothing wrong and stood by his convictions. That's what we need. I have to say, I do agree. I like the fact he, he said he, doesn't, he, didn't like, he was unhappy about his clumsy language, but he's not going to apologise. He's been accused of Islamophobia. I'm sorry, it wasn't Islamophobia. Uh, you've also, as I say, got in touch on the phones. Keep those calls coming in. Let's go to Ben, who's in Bristol. Hello, Ben. Hi, Julia. Good to speak again. Lovely oh, to Julia, speak to you. it was such a shame they cut off the press. You missed it. It was so beautiful. Beth Rigby, do you know what she said to them? What? You didn't answer my question. Oh, bless her. There we are. Um, anyway, we're watching it's our channel. Not... Now, listen, Dave, what did you what did you make of Lee Anderson defecting? And what is it? What, 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 well, it was what... such a contrast to when you get Boris in the room. He's tr like, trying to cow down to these, these journalists. He was speaking it straight. But you know what? I've been, I've been wanting to say this point for a while. I call out to the Tories. What a wet bunch they are. Do you know what they, they put? He said he put principle over party. Now, the, the Tories, they put party over principle. Even people like, who I respect, like Jacob rees Smog or Priti Patel, they all, they're obsessed with being Tories. Have you noticed this? The party, the Tories. It's all about the party. parties. Tories. Whereas actually they most people in this country aren't very party political. And we've lost, a lot of people now float. I mean, I've always been a floating vote. I've never had a loyalty to a party. I always think I want to like vote for someone who I think has got principles, is going to do the policies and force the policies that I want. We haven't got any of those in the Tory party. That's why the country's yeah. in such a quandary. And even Lee, he's discovered more back when he's kind of gone through circumstances. He's sort of forced into this. But I think it is a momentous day for the country. I like reform because they have principles that are better. They're against the net zero and they're, they, get, they don't count down to all these globalist bodies. But the Tories, they can't get over being Tories. That's, Lee that's a very, it's a very interesting point, isn't it? Again, that's the thing. Part of that's our first past the post system, isn't it? Where you know you need to be one of the big parties. Although we have seen big changes in the past, haven't we? Um, Dave, thank you so much. Really appreciate your call. Thank you. Uh, coming up after the break, Oppenheimer was the big win at the Oscars. They won seven Oscars for that film, including the Best Picture award. This was at the ceremony in Los Angeles last night. Barbie, last year's highest grossing film, received just one award for Best Original Song. But it was a gloriously unwoke Oscars. Well done, them. We'll talk about that up next. I'm Julia Hartley Brewer, and you're with Talk TV. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online, and you're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't Talk. gonna happen and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, it's all she's saying, let's just be honest. When a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman is not a woman. Trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position. But I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. And I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right too. Yay. Quite Yay. right too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get. This. <laughs> but 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 I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm, I'm a huge hit on Instagram, as you probably know. What are you doing? I was just about to do it. Ooh, Ooh. It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Ooh, <we're missing. laughs> there was a suggestion by some 
that maybe it was nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth plinth. Mr Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I, know it's, I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue, then. <laughs> Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, <laughs> a trans sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So <laughs> <you've got> to <laughs> for yeah. minute, for... Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, t when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist we're, we're, we're did fail her. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Era. She was 22. Mm. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Welcome back to the show. I'm Julia Hartley Brewer. You're with Talk TV. Now, Oppenheimer was the big winner at the Oscars last night. It won seven Oscars, including the Best Picture Award. And of course, Barbie, last year's highest grossing film, received just one award for Best Original Song. Joining me now to discuss this is Amanda Devlin, who's the assistant showbiz editor at The Sun. Still, of course, is Sam Armstrong. Amanda, this is, this is your bread and butter. You love this stuff. Have you been up all night? Um, actually, I, I, I did a sneaky few hours, and then I thought, no, very wise. This is enough. Goes on I had to be up time. first thing this morning. The people don't seem to be very impressed with the, uh, uh, the host. Uh, uh, as a you know, bit of a yeah. bit of a snore fest. But one thing I was quite excited by, though, it didn't seem to be too much of a woke fest, which was encouraging. Mm. But let's talk about the big one. No doubt at all, Oppenheimer won Best Picture, Best Director for Christopher Nolan, mm -hmm. which he should have won many times before. Mm -hmm. um, leading actor Killian Murphy, supporting actor Robert Downey Jr., both brilliant. Also, Best Original Score, Film Editing, and Cinematography. Um, it's a stonkily good film. It is, absolutely. And it's one of those that you see on the big screen and it's just, it's an iconic kind of one that will go down in history. A lot of people say that's way too long. A lot I, of people I, no also... film needs to be three. It was over three hours. I didn't watch it until about a week or two ago, but I have to say, yeah, three, I, think, I couldn't have done three hours in a cinema. I think well, obviously what everyone was talking about when Best Picture was announced by Al Pacino, he just really, he made this huge moment in, at the Oscars so boring and dull. He just was, he forgot to mention that there were all these nominees. He didn't, he didn't, he basically, he, just, he, went, he got up there and read <laughs> out the envelope. Yeah. yeah, he was just, he just thought, oh, my eyes see this. And it was, so, so the audience also, was sort say, of a bit. You've got one job. Yeah. To read out, to go on stage they and be Al Pacino. He is 83. Read out the he nominees and then. Maybe. Oh, come on. He was, he was honestly, he was awful. So everyone didn't know whether, well, is that, is that it? Should because we, we had that La La Land moment, didn't the we? Moment, years back, yeah. where they were announced as the winner of the best, and it mm. wasn't them, it was another. At least there were no slaps this time around. How, so well, you say, I mean, I thought that made it for, for quite, for quite good view when, uh, when Will Smith slapped. <laughs> I remember waking up in the morning saying to my team when I was on the breakfast show, going, oh God, do we have to do this Oscars nonsense? People, people are highly yeah. paid slapping themselves on the back. And it's like, oh, oh yes, we've got a story. Obviously, I'm everything TV and showbiz. Um, but I do, I find it grating. I, I, I'm not a big fan of this. I think the amount of money that's spent on it, the, the people are just, they are just in a room celebrating themselves and saying how fabulous, fabulous they are. No, and it's the all worst the thing, tears, No, the it? worst thing it's, about it, it's not them. I don't mind them saying, oh my God, I'm beautiful and paid a fortune and I've just won an award, aren't I lucky? It's mm. the fact that it's, it's how they, it's how hard their art is and yes. how, how they have cried and got these like, Give over. You're not sweeping the streets. Get over <laughs> yourself. Well, there were tears from the off because you had that um, divine. She came up on. She was wearing that very fanboyant outfit. I think it was one of probably the worst. She won best supporting there, actress. best supporting actress for the holders. But she, um, she, I, I found her speech to be. I mean, it was. It was it was genuine and moving, but it was so OTT. I, I thought she that spent her breaking life down into like someone like else, that. and now she wants wants to be herself. herself. I mean, 
Um, Emma Stone, she won Best Actress, which was a little bit of a surprise. Um, Wasn't she? But she was, uh, I mean, she's won other awards. It was for Poor Things. This? Yeah, she was. But I think everyone thought that it was going to go to, I can't even remember, Lily Gladstone. That's who it was. Um, and, and even Emma herself was a bit shocked. She sort of said, oh. Why, uh, Lily, why did everyone think it would go to Lily I, Gladstone? Um, just because she was this first Indigenous uh, now, woman to be so awarded. So is this it an awards ceremony? Yes, I know exactly what you're saying. For gonna people for, for ticking a box. Therefore, but I saw reports yesterday saying, this hit, hit and they're, they're, it's, it could be historic when the first Native American woman. Mm. I mean, genuinely, we are, the, these historics are now at the level of sort of the first person who who has ginger hair below their ears. Sort of levels mm. of, uh, it's not. I don't care. And I also were you a good Lily, actress or not? I also think with Lily, it was more of a meaty role, a serious role, whereas they thought that Emma perhaps was. It was she was playing a, a child in this woman's body, but it was. Who was the those, best actress? Yes. Who, who did the best job? I actually think I haven't seen Emma, either of those Emma, films, so Emma I've got Stone no idea. Is, she's fantastic. But her speech was just very OTT. Actually, she bust out of her dress. Yeah. Um, that has, I think she said that she was... It wasn't a very nice dress, though. I don't, it wasn't I, the best. I, I, I do wonder where this... Some do some of I, these women... Here's my thing. Some of the dresses, although I am pleased there's a lot of flesh covered up because I'm I, I'm sorry, I'm just a middle-aged old fuddy-duddy. I find women basically wearing what is, you know, for, for a Valentine's night with the, with the boyfriend might be appropriate, but I don't, <laughs> in bed, as opposed to something to wear on stage. Um, at least these Oscars, the women were actually wearing a decent amount of clothing. covered up. But I do things, wonder, yeah. do, do any of them have either mirrors or friends? <laughs> Because a friend would have said, you might win an Oscar tonight. Is that the dress you want to Is win an Oscar in? The boys get to just wear a tux. Oh, it's so easy. But they have to sort of go between wanting to stand out, but then there's a, it's a very thin line because they can end up looking absolutely horrendous, which I thought Divine Joy was just a little bit too much. Um, and it just was very puffy and sort of bridesmaidy, someone that you wouldn't want to look great at your wedding. That's what she kind of looked like no, to me. There is that. Um, there is that. But Margot Robbie, she looked fantastic, but she went for black and it you've actually worn pink today, sort of solidarity, solidarity with, with Barbie. Margot. Whereas with Margot, Margot were wore black because she got snubbed. She wasn't um nominated for the She best basically actress. dressed as a Barbie doll for every other award ceremony. And then yeah, went, oh, exactly. And then Oscars. Black. Well, because, yeah, because she was upset that but she didn't she get But she shouldn't awarded. win an Oscar for this role. She's obviously a fabulous actress. It's a great, fun film. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, of course, we had, uh, you know, the Ken, I'm just Ken, performed. Do you know what that made me think of, though? I'm getting PTSD from um, Matt Hancock doing that TikTok when he sung oh. I'm Just Ken. Oh, gosh. And so no. I couldn't get it out of my People mind. People might want to eat food. I know. <laughs> Sam Armstrong, now, look, you... you uh, look, politicians are bad enough with their... Yes. But they're sort of, look at me, look at me. Actors are even worse, are they not? But, I mean, what, what do you make of these sort of award ceremonies? Uh, well, I, I confess, I didn't stay up uh, until <laughs> earlier. Of course not, because you're a sane human being. <laughs> yes. Yeah, well, look, uh, I'm glad that Oppenheimer won lots. It's, it's nice to see, actually, a, a proper old-fashioned film. film, in the oldest sense of the term, doing really well. And I'm very glad to hear that someone who was the first Native American born on a Tuesday in <laughs> February it, didn't win it just on the basis of that. But, but look, uh, look, great night. And, but as ever, these speeches are so long. They're so boring. I just remember when Ricky Gervais went on a couple of years oh, yeah. ago and just took him to town. And I think of... that's what it missed was with oh, Ricky. Always, everything is better with Ricky Gervais doing it. I adore him. He just knew how to play it. Uh, Jimmy Kimmel was just a little bit too safe. And it's his it fourth year doing it um, as well. But also, he's friends with he, everyone. But he, was still making, but he was still making jokes about Robert Downey Jr. having been on drugs. Yes, we know that. Well, and also, he's been sober since, what, 2003 or something? Yeah. I felt like it was could very he, unfair yeah. and his big night to bring that up. I didn't, I didn't actually like that. And I think you could tell with Robert's face, oh my goodness, he, he didn't like I mean, it I'm at all. For, I'm all for taking the bit, but again, Ricky Gervais would have done it with a more, with more joke. And also, he goes on and on about how long all the films were. And then everyone was saying how incredibly long uh, bit ironic. his monologue yeah. was. Yeah, the irony <laughs> there. Um, were there any big losers who shouldn't have lost? Because it seems to me that actually, you know, the right film won the big mm. numbers. Really pleased for Christopher Nolan. And also, by the way, an awful lot of Brits involved in all the... the or, or, you know, our side of the Atlantic, at least, involved a lot yes. of big winners. Yes, so of interest taking the But anyway, British is anyone first... who should have won something not get it? Um, I think probably they're expecting a little bit more from Barbie. I know that we don't exactly agree on it, but... Um, it was Barbie because of the because of the the hype around it was the highest grossing film. Everyone thought that this was going to get pick up on these film. exactly. And I think sometimes these films. I always feel I don't know about you, but when you're at awards ceremonies, you watch them and you think 
the, are these the sort of films that we would want to just watch at home, yeah. cozy up on a oh, Friday we, night? As a they general, are intense, yes. you know. As a, a general are... rule, the films that win Oscars now, I think, well, that's one I'm not going to bother watching. Mm -hmm. As a general rule, if they win cinematography awards, mm -hmm. I know it's not for me. It's but, all okay, very serious. But, but, mm -hmm. but to be fair, Oppenheimer did, but that was one of seven, so fair enough. Yes. Thank you very much indeed, Amanda Devlin. Really appreciate you joining us. Um, lots uh, more to come, obviously, about uh, Lee Anderson and everything else coming up on the next uh, show, of course, with Kevin Alex. Sadly, we've come to the end of my show. Thank you so much for tuning in. Big thanks to Sam Armstrong for joining us throughout the show. Same time tomorrow. Please join me then. Up next, it's uh, Kevin O'Sullivan and Alex Phillips. Have a great afternoon. I'm Julia Hartley-Briff, and you are with TV. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't Talk. gonna happen and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. All right, oi, oi, treat girl. When JK Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest. When a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman, trans woman. Is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite Yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. You might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get. This. <laughs> but 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 I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm, I'm a huge hit on Instagram, as you probably know. What are you doing? I was just about to do it. Ooh, Ooh. It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, <miss him. laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. floor.